<laughs> Hi everybody, welcome to tonight's episode of Infinite Horizon, where I accidentally unmuted the cast before transitioning scenes. <laughs> anyway. Good. Welcome. Um, welcome, welcome everybody. Um, it's been only a couple of weeks, it's but been... it feels like you stopped that right it's now. It's like one, hasn't it? It's... Has it been more than it's... one? No, it's been two weeks, because like it would have been one week if we had been on schedule, oh. but... Yeah. It's yep. now been yeah, it's been two. Yeah, it's been yeah. all right. Ooh. Um, so <laughs> anyway. that's all I need. News to me. <laughs> um, it's okay, Olivia. You can be forgiven for not registering the passage of time because it's uh fake. So fake. Uh, yeah. That's so, a lid off my back. Um. Well, welcome everybody. Welcome back to Infinite Horizon. Or if you're here for the first time, welcome. You're gonna be very confused. Um, so <laughs> we're happy to have you, but you're gonna be very confused. Um. <laughs> So, uh, before we get into tonight's episode, I don't know why I said it like that. Um, I have we got some like announcements and reminders and stuff. I mean, more reminders than announcements, but um, we'll start with the announcements because they're shorter. Announcement number one of question mark. Um, you may notice that below us, below me on the screen, there is a brand new donation goal. Um, our previous one, of course, being a Jackbox party night hosted by one John Boyle, our very own resident bard in the Discord, uh, which will be happening on, hold on, I gotta check my dates, I believe it is the 23rd, so not this Saturday, but the Saturday after that. Um, the new goal is so ominous in its title. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so as Olivia has, has uh, pointed out here, um, the, uh, the, the new goal is that uh, n if we reach our goal by the end of this month, Freeman and I will uh, have a community night in the Discord where you can watch us freak out while playing The Forest because it is a terrifying game. Um, and Freeman and I are very bad at it. So uh, <laughs> it'll be lots of fun. You can come mm -hmm. hang out, watch us uh, scare ourselves. It'll be, it'll be <laughs> a lot of fun. Um, especially because Freeman has not seen some of the more terrifying enemies in that game and i have told him nothing about them and yep. uh, oh god somebody yeah it's i'm looking yeah. forward to it <laughs> i still wake up in cold sweats uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do that so if y'all um if y'all can uh you know if if y'all want to like donate to that and want to see that happen um we have a donation goal up for that um which we can be can be reached at this point it really only is tracking the uh streamlabs donations um however if you want to support and you're okay with not advancing the goal um there are lots of other ways to do that which i will talk about at the end of the stream um for now however um that's so that's our kind of our first announcement um the rest of the stuff, I believe, is just reminders for things. Oh, wait, no, there's one, one announcement. Um, Ramblemancy this week. We announced that we were having a guest this Friday, um, and uh, some life things have come up, and that will not be the case, unfortunately. So uh, our the guest that we originally had um, will have to be rescheduled to another time. But we will still be having Ramblemancy, and maybe we'll find a last-minute guest, or, or maybe not. Tune in <laughs> to find out. The only way to find out is by showing up. Uh, <laughs> So it'll be a fun mystery. Um, <clears throat> the rest is reminders. Reminder that uh, we had our very first, technically the third chapter of Republic City Rumble, but the first chapter on Re of Republic City Rumble on Rule of Lore this past Saturday. Um, our collaborative actual play with Q Times. Uh, so we had our third episode of that. Um, this Saturday, the VOD went up on Tuesday, so you can check that out on YouTube. Uh, if you haven't caught up, this Saturday, this coming Saturday, will at 6 p.m. Pacific time, will be the fourth and final episode of Republic City Rumble. So if you haven't been keeping up with it, uh, this is a good, and you want to you wanna be there live for the last one, this is a good chance to uh, to watch the first few episodes. Um, the first two are, ho are on Q Times YouTube. The, the most recent one is on our YouTube, but we both, both Q Times and Rule of Lore have playlists with all the episodes. So you can, uh, check those out there. Um, yeah. Um, is that everything? I feel like that's everything. All of the announcements. Freeman, correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, I thought I had something, but I don't think so. Hmm. Uh, I do. Hold on. Follow me on Twitter. 
Uh, yeah, follow Remy on Twitter. That's um, true. That's very important. <laughs> um, the <laughs> thank you, Drag. <laughs> um, the uh, latest Patreon post is up for patrons, so uh, y'all can go check that out right now. We did a tabletop tool chest. It does our spooky adventure hooks, and there's some Ooh. cool stuff in there. So. Um, most of most of it written by Freeman. So. <laughs> <laughs> I am always spooky. I'm always ready for spooky. That's my secret cap. I'm always spooky. Um, yeah. So that is up on Patreon right now. So patrons, go check that out. Um, yeah, I think that's everything for me. Uh, anybody else have announcements? I know, Caitlin, you've got something. <laughs> <laughs> Our plays back this week for season four. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. I can't believe. Yeah. Forced. <laughs> probably is a year old now as of like a week ago this week <laughs> just <laughs> yeah. that's crazy i yeah so powerfully is a year old and we're coming back for season four and there are some other things that i'm it. doing that i can't tell you about yet but keep an eye on my twitter because things will happen eventually just not on my timeline <laughs> i'm done with my part uh and yeah speaking of power play there's some very very exciting yeah i heard exciting, i heard something yes. cool is happening with power play i think some or like it depends who it is but i think some dude some, some weirdo is coming on motherfucker i've ever you know, met coolest, in my life i, I think know. is guesting yeah this week yeah that sounds about I don't right know about that. I think I heard that yeah i think i heard that from lots of people you're actually gonna come play yeah. my best friend again on sunday i'm very excited, I'm excited. I'm so stoked. We're going to be so obnoxious. You guys yeah, are going to really turn are. off the stream. <laughs> so what's, what's new? Yeah. <laughs> you know Olivia what? with the That's casual fair. roast. I love it. That's fair. Love you guys. Love you guys. <laughs> awesome. That's all I got. Hell yeah. Um, for me, other than that awesome news on Sunday, 5 p.m. Pacific, be there. Um, I'm also going to be on Keats Patoots on Friday I don't know the time. Friday is 6 p.m. Eastern. That's it. No. Yes. Friday 6 p.m. Eastern on Cutis Petit on Twitch. Um, Twitch. I'm going to be playing in a Halo Halo and Horns one shot with the Brandy Rose and by Connie Chang, um, the creator of the game, which is really going to be a ton of fun. I get to be the horns. So I'm going to be the devil on Connie's shoulder while Brandy's going to be the angel. Um, on Saturday... I'm going to be over on Funny Garden's channel um, for uh, a game that was re- um, unlocked after a charity stream. It's going to be called Wacky Baby Races, where I play a, we all play babies <laughs> racing like my road car. Um, That's I think my car- oh my God, my I car- heard Wacky the- Baby Racists. I was like, what? Oh <laughs> like, races, races. Like the combo races, of words there. Races. For sure were three <laughs> words you said in, in some order. <laughs> Oh God! Yeah, races as in Mario Kart. Um, <laughs> Ooh, our energy tonight. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, so good. This is what happens um, when you don't have at least once a week of outlet. You know, for the- yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, three <yeah>, so <coughs> you on fun again on the channel. I'm gonna be playing Baby Daffy, um, Baby Daffy Duck, and that's gonna be a ton of fun. Um, I think that's it. Sunday, be the at Q time, power play 5 p.m. Pacific, because that's going to be fun as well. That's everything. Hell yeah. Um, any other announcements before we get into tonight's game? Um, yeah, I shaved five days ago. I apologize. Hell yeah. I'll grow back. <laughs> that's what it was. <laughs> I, I was like, you look. I was like, <laughs> I was like, you look so, you look so different. But I, I just, I genuinely just. <laughs> Tonight you're joined you by 15 year old Freeman. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. I love it here. I missed you guys. How's everybody, how's everybody doing good? <laughs> great. Doing great. Um, all right, everybody. Well, um, with that, I think it is time for us to dive into our final fifth episode. <laughs> I was waiting for it. I was waiting for you I to know, do that. I know, I know. <laughs> it's uh it's one of those things where like where like you do it you do it a couple of times it's funny the first couple of times and that stops being funny but then if you keep going you push through it gets funny again exactly so we're, yeah. we're currently not in that last stage so. yeah it's currently yeah. not funny again <laughs> yeah yet. yeah so um anyway we'll get into tonight's episode of Enterprise. <laughs> see you in just a second.
and we're back. Hello. Um, all right. So, previously on Infinite Horizon, uh, as corporate ships bore down on the Resistance, the base's evacuation was put in jeopardy by the presence of a vessel capable of generating gravity wells and preventing their escape. Um, in an effort to buy time for the evacuation, the crew of Awakener set out to disable the ship to clear a path for the Resistance's ships. Uh, faced with an ambush inside, they leapt into action against corporate supers, Rage and Stormer, and their armored security. After a short but intense fight, the crew of Awakener fought off their opposition and made their way to one of the ship's gravity well generators. Bina was able to glean enough information from the ship's systems to rig the gravity well generator's power regulation to overload on command. However, in spite of Bina's technical prowess, their sabotage was no guarantee of success. With the fate of the Resistance hanging on their success, Mason pr proposed an additional measure, using his power of hyperadaptivity to survive the crushing pressures of the gravity well generator to detonate a singularity grenade inside it. They escaped just as the grenade detonated, causing the entire capital ship to be crushed under the gravitational forces of its own tech and giving the Resistance the window they needed to escape. In the aftermath of the evacuation, the crew gathered aboard Wire's ship with the rest of the original members of the Resistance. Although it felt like they had suffered a great blow, there was still one more loss yet to be revealed. Wire admitted that in the commotion of staging the evacuation, she'd somehow missed reports uh, that corporate forces had blockaded and occupied Sulon, the last bastion of the Resistance. On Becker's suggestion, they decided to pursue their lead with a rising syndicate in the border worlds to negotiate or beg for allies. With the ship underway, the crew retired uh, to their quarters to rest and cope with the desperation of their latest circumstance. Alone in her room, Peach received a message from her uh, to her terminal. It was a warning that the corporate attack was just the beginning, that they could be reached in any universe, anywhere. Though the message wasn't signed, Peach knew the sender could only be Onira her parallel universe counterpart. Uh, and that is where we left off. So, um, <clears throat> right now we're going to pick up, not there exactly, but we're going to take a couple of, we're going to say a, a couple of hours, a few hours have passed. Everybody, I would say, is pretty exhausted of, after the day's events. Um, and for the most part, uh, I'll leave it up to you whether you have uh, actually rested or not, but in any case... Um, enough time for resting has passed when we pick up now. Um, so, uh, currently Wire's ship still is still in FTL headed for an, a, an enclave of relative safety out in, deeper into the border worlds. Um, as far as the rest of you are aware, there hasn't been too much, um, cross-conversation from uh, the crew who managed to uh, to uh, escape currently on Wire's ship. Um, most everybody, after the immediate uh, end of the day's events, sort of uh, found their own way and um, are coping in their own ways. Um, so I think in given that, I will... Uh, I'll turn it over to you, but before I do, what I will say is I'll give you a quick, like, rundown, because you would know this by this point, of, like, who specifically has made it onto Wire's ship. So, it is all of the original crew of Awakener. Um, so, like, like NPCs included. Wire and Zaya, Becker, um, uh, uh, um, Abriel's sister, uh, Liarali, um, or Ari, for short, um, and um, being one of the people who opted to stay the longest to make sure the evacuation proceeded without a hitch uh, in the uh, in the hangar bay on the base side, um, uh, Bina's old friend uh, Casimir also made it uh, on. Uh, Kasmaras made it onto the ship as well. He was like one of the last people who was in the process of evacuating people. So. Um, yeah, made it onto Wire's ship. So, that's where we are at now. Um, so, I'll turn it over to all of you uh, to just decide um, where you are kind of at this point. You're still sort of in transit uh, in FTL. Uh, Mason probably didn't sleep much. 
So Mason's going to have a cup of coffee, probably be in like a mess hall of some kind and just kind of sip on coffee and just kind of lean up, leaning up against the counter. I would probably go to find Taeon um, to talk to him, but we have to do that next if other people want to do. Like if Taeon's doing something. I don't, know, Taeon, I don't think Taeon would be doing anything. I think he'd be um, probably in his quarters um, just trying to keep up to date as with as much as he can with what's going mm-hmm. on on Sulon, I think. So just seeing what the news is saying, because I'm assuming there's probably like some kind of news coverage or what's going on there. Um, and anything that, um, anything that could get his hands on, any intel, he's just kind of like looking over it. Just seems to keep an eye on the situation if it escalates or not. Sure. Okay, so it's probably been like a few hours at this point um, and you just hear like a knock on your on your door. Yeah, come in. Am I interrupting anything? Um, no, nothing. Um, nothing's changed. It's just still the blockade surrounding Sulon. Okay, well, I'm glad you're not working on anything because I have something that I need you to help me figure out. Okay. Yeah. Um, what, what do you need? And uh, and Peach looks kind of like she looks visibly like a little bit fl- like a little bit um kind of disheveled. Um, which I guess isn't that surprising considering what we just did, but like she looks visibly disheveled and she just like shows her terminal TO and has the has the note up. Who who's this from? Give you three guesses. Took me one. I'm saying it can take me one as well. Yeah. So I, I'm gonna call. I'm gonna go talk to Wire about how to kind of contain this breach. But um, I don't know. I thought maybe you you might have some insight, some threat assessment, or I I don't know how it. I've never done that before cause the whole entire, I guess, split. Um, but what you know, she knows, what I knew at least, at, at some point your past went vastly different directions. So mm-hmm. depending on how she's watching, I don't know. I, I really don't know. Either she's watching you or just remembering. And if she's just remembering, I think we might be safe for now. Well, that's the thing. I don't know if she has some way of monitoring. I mean, she's been physically in a lot of the locations we've been in, and I can look into any location that I've been at. So. So there's no reason why she can't as well. Yeah. So it shouldn't be in the future, though. She shouldn't be able to see where we're going. No, no, I don't think. But she's the reason they found us. That explains, that explains a lot, honestly. There was no other way for them to have found out that quickly as well. Um, I wonder those, those guys that we faced in the ships, they had some kind of armor that disabled abilities or, or messed with them somehow. I was just thinking that would be really helpful against her power if we could get our hands on those. I mean, they were hard for me to get through, so hopefully they'd be hard for her. If we can, I suppose we can get hands on it. I don't know how good wearing it would be, but maybe being contained in a room made of similar technology at the very least might be useful but that might also mean you'll be stuck in a room for quite a while i uh i don't know if i don't know if this will happen but if she can reach out and control so many minds i mean she controlled what six capital ships there might be a time when I need to go and face her alone. And if that happens, I uh, 
I want you to take over for me. I can put it in writing if you want. <laughs> Wire might want me to do that. Yeah, she's very much all about formalities. Um, but one, if that does end up happening, you passing on whatever role, to me, sounds a lot like you think you're not going to make it. And if that's the case, you definitely should be going alone. It's just a precaution. Okay. It makes, we all have to plan for the worst, even if it doesn't happen. I mean, I beat her once, so I just don't know. Yeah. I can if, count on that every time. time. Yeah. I I mean, I assume you came to me because you know I'm going to agree. I had a suspicion. Yeah, um, but I'm assuming that also means you don't want me to tell the rest of them? Well, I'm not going anywhere tonight. I just, I just wanted to be prepared in case there's a sudden change or, I don't know, it just, it feels, feels very personal. And yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want anyone here to get dragged down into that. We have more pressing concerns. Yeah, I can, well, one, you're going to be fine. I think that's it's always nice and better to walk into any kind of altercation with that mindset. Um, but in case things don't turn out the way we want, yes, I'll, I'll take your position. I'm not as good of a speaker as you, but when it comes to combat, and it seems that we're going to be engaging a lot of that, I know my way around that. So I can, I'll pull my weight. But yeah. if you can, we do need to figure out where they sent this from. It could at least get, get us to know where yeah. they were last. Yeah, I'm going to bring it over to Wire. I just wanted to talk to you first. Yeah. Um, yeah. This is honestly the least I can do. I guess I technically brought her into existence. I don't know. It's best not to think about that whole, I mean, once yeah, you open yeah. up all those doors, it's like. Yeah, I'm, I want to be a lot more careful with how I use that avoid avoid situations like that entirely rather than try and undo them instead. Um, yeah. yeah, I thank you for letting me know. Yeah. And, uh, uh, at this point, I think it might be best if I save this from the rest of them until it becomes actually more pertinent. I think we have a lot on our mind already. Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, at this point, the door to the to your I assume you're in your quarters, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the door um, opens, and you see uh, Ada Spricks is standing yes. in the doorway. Um, oh, I was so hoping this would happen. You can see that she doesn't look surprised to see you there, Peach. Um, she doesn't look taken aback. She just uh, looks in and just says, "Hi." Uh, I just wanted to make sure everybody was okay. You um, okay? Hmm? Um, as okay as any of us are right now, I think. Yeah. Feeling great. Yeah. Uh, you, you know that she knows you're lying. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like Peach says it like sarcastically, yeah. but it's like, it's like sarcasm double whammy, I feel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Ada looks in, uh, hesitates in the doorway for a second, looks at you, Tan, looks at you, Peach, and just says, right, well, um, uh, I... Well, I, I was just leaving, um. Yeah, um. Thanks, Tan. 
and like Peach kind of like grabs your arm and like like does kind of like a like a like a shake. <laughs> like she. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> Oakley lets them shake their his hand. Um, and then yeah, no no problem. Yeah, Ada like kind of gives you a, a quick smile as you leave Peach, uh, and uh, she sort of steps a little further into the room, just looks over. She like glances past you at the displays, um, and then looks back at you. Uh, she says, um, I just wanted to see how, uh, you were doing. Uh, I'm, um, I'm not doing okay. I was going to lie, but yeah, um, you'd know. I don't know. I. She just. Was... Yeah, she shakes her head. She says, I'm angry too. I feel like this is the second time that we had all of our focus on one thing and we weren't looking for another. And now the one side to openly support us is under some kind of siege. Yeah. So much for being able to be in two places at once, right? <laughs> yeah, I... I was... No one here understands war. At the end of the day, that's where we're at at this point. No one understands it like we do, like I meant to. And yeah, I didn't see this coming. I didn't look for this, even if it wasn't going to happen. Preparing for the worst case scenario is meant to be what I'm meant to be good at. I'm meant to be here to do, and I couldn't. And now, soon on, who knows who else are going to be paying the price for that. Really lost so many city so many lives people are looking for their parents family brothers sisters siblings because we couldn't because i couldn't foresee this stop this i'm not going to try to make you feel better because right now i don't even think i have that in me but we all have some responsibility for this we all share the responsibility for this. Especially yeah, the two I... of us. Everything that we've seen, everything that we've known, and it's just useless here. <sighs> the corpse I... that we deal with, that we dealt with back home, are so different from this. They have so much more at their disposal here than they did then. It's like, how are we even supposed to even begin? It's actually, um, I don't know if I gave you much of an update. It was, it was very rushed, but um, they had a precaution for me jumping in and out of there. Um, I was wondering what took so long. Yeah. Yeah, and... I mean, it's not like... I mean, no, radiation affects how my, especially my teleportation works, but they wouldn't or shouldn't know that. And we found out by accident, but they very purposefully were looking for, for chronokinetic energy. And at least I don't think I've been making at least my powers very clear that they're chronokinetic related for the most part. That kind of confirms. I was talking to Wire. Wire thinks we might have a leak of some kind. Oh, she's definitely going to feel, <laughs> feel um, a pang of, I don't know, guilt, I guess would be the, I don't know if that's the right one or, um, 
he's dread or dread maybe i don't know yeah she like looks up at you like at that and just goes what was that do you know something God, sometimes i hate that i can't lie to you um She just sort of shakes her head at you and says, sometimes I wonder why you'd want to. You don't have um, to say anything. You don't have to say anything. Operational security, I understand. Uh, and she just starts walking to the door uh, and she just says, she stops at the door and she just turns back and says one day one day I hope that we run out of wars for you to fight uh, and the, she opens the door opens uh, and she walks out into the hallway he just leans back and just stares at the terminals. Um, we'll cut to. Uh, Being hurt. <laughs> we'll cut to Mason in the in the mm. in the uh, galley, which is not as well stocked as Awakeners. Um, it it is like bare bones. It literally this it is literally stocked with uh, caffeine, and there are like some, like whatever the whatever the like equivalent of like saltine crackers are in this universe. Um, and like basically nothing else. Um, <laughs> uh, so I'll, I'll Mason will be dipping saltine crackers in the coffee and kind of just <laughs> oh god, kind of just staring into the room. Yeah, that's disgusting. <laughs> Cursed. And then we'll be like, mm, no, not great. <sighs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, you Jade walks in uh, at this point and catches you in there, and he looks at you and he he what he looks at what you're doing and just says. Yeah, I tried that too. It's not great. You didn't say anything? Well, I didn't know anybody else was going to do it. And he like sits he sits down, like pulls the like the carafe to- towards himself and pours himself a cup and sets it down and just kind of leans back in his chair. And says, "I haven't been able to sleep at all." Same. But I'm weirdly not. I don't know, I thought I'd be tired, but I'm not. Yeah, that that it tends to become the case. The more, the more we're going to go through, the more sleepless nights, and the more, the more you build up on it. Yeah, you're going to have to at some point, and I say this not just to you, but to myself as well. At some point, we are both going to have to force ourselves to sleep. Well, I tried, um, but it's like I couldn't even get my eyes to stay shut, and. Like it's not even right, like well. a like I mean I've pulled late nights with Bina in the engine room, but I've it's not like it's not even like that. It's not like the ang- it's not like anxiety or anything like that. And he like takes a sip of the coffee. He just says, I don't know. It's like I don't even feel tired at all. I'm like I I don't know. I just you think it's you think it's your powers. I'd never thought about that. This is going to take a lot of getting used to, isn't it? I'm still getting used to it myself, but I mean, you could always try, if, if, if you need help sleeping, you could always try um, just like make sure you give yourself an hour or two off of your device. Don't look at any terminals. This is what I do. And now I don't even check my mess. <clears throat> messages very often um <laughs> yeah Mason, you like oh shit and you like pull up your <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe a couple hours before and then when you finally turn the lights out just just take deep breaths and just say the word sleep in your head just say it and make sure you can take deep breaths and count to six okay and if that doesn't work, there's a pressure point right behind your ear here. And you just rub that, just rub it about a hundred or 200 times. I, 
that's a lot to remember, and I feel like trying to remember all that is going to keep me awake. But I think if it comes down to it, I might just ask Peach for help. She's helped me before. Oh, <laughs> oh you mean the 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 magic the magic sleep? Sure, yeah. It's a little weird, but it works just as well as regular sleep, so. <clears throat> For now, though, um... Don't tell Abriel. I'm kind of trying to, uh... I'm trying to test sort of... Not, not my limits. I don't think I'm ready for that yet. But I'm trying to test... Just feel these powers out. And if... If keeping me awake and alert is one of them, is part of them, then I kind of want to see how that goes. I mean... For all I know, it maybe means that I need less sleep and not no sleep. Maybe it means I... Maybe I don't need any anymore. I don't know. But there's really only one way to find out, I think. Well, now that I am... Now that I have, um, am involved in now in this secret, you might as well have me help you if you need. Hmm. Are you sure you don't want to maintain plausible deniability? I don't think that's a possibility where April's concerned. That's fair. By the way, we never really had much of a chance to... Because a, a, a lot of stuff happened very quickly, and... I, I never I never thanked you for being around when when everybody was in their bad place. Uh, yeah. You were kind of the only person that I could... That would talk to me. That would um, make time. And I want to say thank you. Well, thank you. Well, I hope you learned something from it. Um... If I did, I haven't managed to put it into words just yet. Does that count? Don't worry. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> <sighs> I still don't think I'm going to sleep, so... No, no, not at all. Uh, he just kind of, like, leans back. And there's this moment, I think, where, like, both of you just sort of, like, simultaneously, just in perfect unison, just, like, sip the coffee and set it back down. <laughs> Um, what is, uh, what's Bina doing at this point? Does anything need upkeep, repair, let maintenance? Me, let me answer that question with another question. <laughs> does it matter if it does? No. No, okay. not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, let me rephrase. Where can Bina get her hands on something that can be maintenance, whether it okay. needs it or not? Fire's ship it has been, like, it's in perfectly fine working condition. But it is Wire's ship, and therefore um, it has not been maintenanced. Except, I mean, like, it's been maintenanced by, like, uh, m like maintenance crews whenever they can get to it. But since it's not something that's been in regular usage, it hasn't taken... Like, basically, it's just sort of been in orbit for, like, months, basically. Yeah. Keeping sort mm -hmm. of, like, in, like, a geos uh, geosynchronous orbit, essentially. And, like, it hasn't been, like, used. It's been basically in, like, low-power mode for months, Taking Perfect only, candidate. Yeah. Perfect so candidate. Like, yeah. For, for Bina right now. <laughs> it's fine, but by Bina standards, it's not at all fine. <laughs> yes. Yes. No. Yeah. She's mm. been as, like, I think probably, like, she's not hiding. Like, this isn't, like, mm. back at the base six months ago or whatever. Like, mm -hmm. this is, like, like, she's very openly, like, walking around and with, with her tool toolkit and probably some extra things and rolling like a like if there's like a hover like cart behind her with like miscellaneous parts and like things like she's found the stores of um like where the extra parts go where like the extra like everything is and is just like carrying it around with her and replacing things like taking rotating things like literally just slowly moving through and it's a really big vessel so like she's not made much of a dent yeah. <laughs> at all well <laughs> no she's <laughs> She's made more of a dent than any other singular person on this ship could mm -hmm. because of who she is as a person and also because of her abilities, but it is still a very large ship. So, yeah, she's just doing that. She's just moving around and doing that because she can't stop. And if anyone is within, like, 
immediate distance of her, I guess, like immediate range of her, um, feels like cold. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, like that, like pit of your stomach, you like down your spine, like that kind of cold, not like, not like temperature wise, but like emotionally body sensation. And it's not like overwhelming, but like you get like a hint of it if you're within, within her orbit, within like the, her five foot orbit. But yeah, she's just moving. Okay. She can't stop. Yeah. You, there's a, there's a single, there's a certain point where you basically are like fully like half of your, like half of your, like for your full torso is inside of like a maintenance duct and you're just like, <laughs> yeah, like out. feet out at, into the, like the, the corridor, which like the structure of wires ship is such that like the vast majority of it is taken up by like the cargo bay. Mm-hmm. Um, this is basically a repurposed freight ship. Um, like a small one, but still like a repurposed freight ship, um, which currently in the vast cargo bay is where Awakener is birthed. Mm-hmm. Um, as well as there, there is also one shuttle uh, docked there as well. Um, but the and that takes up like the vast majority of this ship. Uh, the rest of it is mostly like corridors to like sort of get around it um, to sort of the aft facing engine area, right, which is sort of stationed above and behind the engine uh, or the uh, cargo bay. Um, and uh, so just like, mo- and then like just directly above the cargo bay, much much smaller in terms of space, uh, is sort of like the the living areas. Uh, and then beyond that, mostly what is what this ship consists of is um, is like the the bridge and like uh, security office, which has been repurposed for Wire's own like uh, like sort of mobile setup essentially. Um, so <clears throat> right now where you're kind of in one of those corridors and you hear from inside like the maintenance duct you hear footsteps approaching and you recognize the presence as Casimir right away um and uh before long you can kind of see you see like a hand sort of appear around the the edge of the duct and his face sort of appearing in it he, he looks down um and he's uh he's Terran um with sort of like very sort of like age lines kind of around like uh uh, sort of around his his uh, his mouth and kind of the corners of his mouth and like starting to sort of develop like kind of crow's feet a little bit, um, but he like and sort of his worry lines in his forehead as as he sort of like frowns looking in and goes, "Hey, you uh, you need any help in there?" Um, is there room for two people to lay down no, in here where I'm laying? Uh, <laughs> they're definitely not. Um, and she'll like, like, kind of slide out a little bit, and like, will like motion with her foot to the, the cart that's kind of hovering there, mm-hmm. and she'll be like, the big red box on top. You know what I mean that? Yeah, and he kind of uh, walks over to it, grabs it, um, brings it over, and sets it down next to you. Uh, and he sort of like, as you're as he sets it down, he like goes the rest of the way down, kind of like sits down in the corridor and and like slides down it, puts his back up against the wall. Hey, you go. How's it going in here? Good. It's just, it's not a bad ship. It's just, hasn't, I haven't been able to climb around in it. Um, so it's, could use some work, which I am providing. Um, yeah, I was, uh, I was taking a look around the, uh, around the cargo area, around the hold, and, uh, getting in under some of those, uh, some of those deck plates there, looking at some of the, uh, some of the, uh, maintenance trenches in there. Um, look, I know what you're gonna say, but I definitely found uh, I definitely found evidence of some deck mites. So, <sighs> Bina pulls up uh, her terminal and like a little like hollow screen flash slip. She goes, which which court which quarter of the? It was, uh, it was uh, port aft. There was problems over there. She she adds like there's a schematics of the whole ship, and she'll like add as she adds notes in, and and we'll close it back down. And just kind of like lets her head fall back against the the floor, and kind of like stares at the ceiling. Yeah, don't worry, I um I made sure that uh, to uh, take the necessary precautions. Awakener should be safe. Um, so uh, yeah, as long as you uh, as long as you keep uh you know uh the the boarding ramp opening and closing to a minimum yeah or i don't know when we'll be using her next so she's probably fine yeah or do you want to start handing me them and she'll point to the box and yeah it's like pods of like coolant or something that yeah. she's replacing down here yeah he starts taking them out and sort of setting and them like, like 
arranging yeah. them. And the two of you fall into a pretty familiar rhythm, like mm-hmm. literally just sort of like from back when you both worked on, on Station 23 yeah. and like maintenance stuff. He like lays everything out for you, like n- like anticipating your needs based on the mm-hmm. task that you're going to be doing. Just They're like setting. pairs that needs to be next to yeah. you or whatever. And yeah, and she'll just, yeah. You know, two hands working, two hands reaching. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> yeah. I got it down. Yeah. Uh, few, uh, but probably about, I would say like, like maybe about 15 minutes or so go by like this. And you finally manage to kind of like finish up what you're doing. Um, a little faster than you would have been able to do it on your own just because you don't have to keep going in and out just to get get mm-hmm. stuff. And I think Kasmar would notice well before he never like she could never project her feelings outwardly so I mean mm-hmm. I don't know how much time she spent with him to have noticed that but I think during this time I think while they get into like a monotonous rhythm the coolness kind of like lessens a little like it's not quite so like it's still there it doesn't go away but i think when she gets it's this is a comfortable homey rhythm from this is from a comfort time in her life that is very like with a person doing a thing that is yeah so i think there's a little bit of a lesson of of that Mm -hmm. yeah he uh he doesn't comment on it um he but i wouldn't expect him to yeah you uh (laughs) you're kind of finishing up and as you're kind of like pulling out of the uh out of the duct he's there he's already like in the process of putting stuff away um, and he looks over at you and goes, well, it's a start, that's for sure. That it is. He kind of looks around and says, I, uh, I don't know. You know, this, uh, this whole <laughs> resistance thing. I mean, I started out just trying to find out what happened to you, you know, and, uh, let me down a hole. No, no, no. Uh, long, long road, and that road eventually led me here. But I gotta say, this is—I mean, I, I, on some level, I think I always knew. I knew, I knew what we were doing, obviously. Like I, but you know, I didn't expect this. <laughs> this is—it uh, got very real today, or yesterday, <laughs> whenever it was. I haven't really been keeping track. Passive time. Ooh. Is it always like this for all you? Uh, on and off, I would say. <laughs> so some there's some periods of laying low. But this might I'm not gonna lie to you, this is not good. Yeah. It's not good. <sighs> Almost makes me uh miss doing full overhauls on uh uh, on those rich bastards ships when remember when they would always bring in their their sports ships I think of it often and fondly uh, I mean you think of it fondly because you all, all you had to do was get in the in, on the inside me I actually had to deal with those assholes you're very you're very powerful <laughs> you're very strong I'm just and brave I'm just old and irritable really puts people off perfect that's what they needed I think I'm really glad you're okay. Yeah. What about you? How you doing? Moving. Yeah. I gotta keep moving. Because I think if I think about the last 48 hours... For more time... Then a second, it's not gonna be good. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. So I'm doing what I can to be helpful in my weird, obsessive ways. She kind of like looks at the, <laughs> the, the cool, the cool replaced kit that's now empty with all the spare parts that she's just gonna go rotate and clean and put back in the reuse pile. Yeah. He, uh... But it's something. Yeah. And hey, you know what? Some people are going to probably tell you that it's important to, you know, sit and process things. But you know what? That looks different for every person. This is rest for me. Yeah. Uh, You can see as he kind of, like, looks over and, like, kind of glances down the hallway. You can see, uh, as you follow his gaze, you can see that, like, uh, you can see uh, Alma walking down the, the hall towards both of you. He goes... (sighs) <sighs> um, I noticed you're a little low on some of these coolant pods. You want me to go get some more and replace them? 
That'd be great. Here, you if you want to take this one too, and she'll kind of pick up the box and be like, I'll, I'll, I can reuse these, and she'll mess them. Yeah, he, the card. he takes one and says, "All right, let's see. Uh, listen, I have a great amount of respect for this uh, this wire person, but I, she does not know. She does not take care of her ships. No, she does not. She does not take care of her ships. Nope. So I'm gonna go see what we can scrounge around. Um, you have extra coolant on Awakener just in case." Yeah, oh, we should. Okay. Here, and she's going to pull up a terminal again and, like, basically make the her schematics shareable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he likes <laughs> So, like, like Casimar, like, they can have, like, a Google Doc that they can both edit. If you find yeah. anything, put it in there. Sure. If you fix yeah. anything, put it in there. It helps me. Perfect. I'm pretty sure we should be okay just from what I saw, but who knows how long some of that coolant's been here, so... Wouldn't put it past. Oh, oh be just like, don't make me think about that. I wouldn't put I it past I've made progress. Too. We're not going to think about how old the coolant is. Hey, you know what? As long as as long as the only the only uh, the only expired one is the ones, the extra stuff and not the stuff in the in the tanks, then we're good to go. It'll be fine. It's good. It's fine. It'll be good. Uh, he takes he takes the 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 uh, the box and like he like goes through the cart for a second as Alma like walks up and he like goes through the cart take stuff and then kind of sets it all into like one of the boxes and uh and so um she steps over um alma is currently like basically she's in just sort of like a like oversized sweater right now um and like uh and you can tell that she's like wearing shorts under it but like she's it's it goes far below like you can't see them um and she she is cozy mode yeah she uh, walks over to where you are, and she goes, I uh, I think I got about as much sleep as I'm going to get. You need any help? Yes, let's do it. And she's, she's going to pull up her schematics. It's just going to share them with Vina, too. Or with, Vina's going to share them with Alma, too. Yeah. Uh, and she'll be like, okay, so here's what I've done today. And she's going to, like, lean over and show her, like... <laughs> She's yeah. immediately into work mode, <laughs> and this is where I'm. I'm gonna start moving down the, down this way, and I think we'll be good at the end of the hall because I already did all the ones back that way. We'll be good. I think it'll be okay. I'm moving pretty quick, and I will continue to find more things to mess with. And wire can eat my shorts. <laughs> I um, yeah, that's fair enough. Um, I think. Do you have a good sleep? Yeah, yeah. Well. Under the circumstances, yeah. Bad question. Have you? Well, I know you haven't. A little bit, like a nap, but like, not. But like, I closed my eyes for like a half an hour earlier. I wasn't asleep, but I did close my eyes. They were shut, and I wasn't doing anything. Fair enough. Um, I think I'm pretty sure I passed the. Uh, I passed the, the galley on the way here. I'm pretty sure you've done more than Mason, so. He's resting. Resting is productive. Uh, well, I meant in the way of resting, but yeah. Um, and she says, actually, that reminds me. And she, she, like, reaches down. Like, you can see that she has kind of, like, a like a bag sort of slung over her shoulder. And she, like, takes it and reaches inside and says, I figured you probably didn't eat. And she, like, hands you, like, just, like, you can tell it's definitely, like, some of Awakener's stores, not... Mm-hmm. Not this ship's because it's not mm-hmm. saltines. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's just like some like minor like nutritious looking like snack food kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, Have you eaten? She says, um, no, actually, and she like reaches into her bag and pulls out more. Yeah, and... pat pats the seat mm-hmm. down on yeah. the. She's gonna just like sink down to the the floor yeah. and lean up against the wall and pat. Yeah, she her. does the same uh, mm-hmm. and sort of starts like un- unwrapping the container. Starts. <sighs> this uh sorry sorry i weird thoughts never mind when have i ever strayed away from weird thoughts what's the emotional read on that (laughs) on that Uh, that hold back for a second (laughs) it's like there was it was sort of neutral ish at first and then sort of like when she like caught herself there was sort of like a like a slight guilt reaction and then um she's like no i just okay I guess it's just the the thought that just occurred to me right now, but um, <clears throat> just thinking is this is this what it was like after uh, after Sulan last time? I mean, in terms of the general mood and atmosphere. <sighs> it's 
somehow. I don't think it's quite as bad as it was the first time. Well, that does make me feel a little better. Uh, and she just kind of smiles at you and just like keeps eating. I don't know. I don't know if it's because we're used to it, desensitized to it. That's not a good thought, but at least, at least we're moving. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie, I don't remember a lot from the last time, the first few I'm weeks. I'm sorry, I, I, I shouldn't have brought it up, especially now. That's, it's just the thought that hit. It's okay. I've never really talked about it, so. Mm. Better out than in, I guess. I, uh... I don't really know how to process any of this. I mean... I On, on some level, I recognize that this is bad. This is, this is bad, but at the same time, I... I didn't put as much into that place as the rest of you did. And so I know it's bad, but everybody made it. Everyone made it. The resistance isn't gone. It's just... It's just Noble. Yeah. Which, all things considered, might even be better. Harder yeah, how to read. Not so much all single target, eggs in one basket, etc. Maybe this is terrible to even think. I loved the base. I think it was great, and it sucks that we don't have that anymore, but... I also don't have a lot of good memories there. So. Yeah. Uh, sitting next to you, she just... You kind of fall into, a, like, sort of a thoughtful silence for a moment, and... After a minute, she just sort of like gives you sort of like a playful elbow in the sh in the in the side. So. <sighs> well, um, I was talking with Awakener, and Awakener has done a full scan of this ship, and I am I'm gonna I'm not gonna lie. It needs work. It really, it really needs work. It needs a lot of work. Uh, she kind of like finishes I'm kind up. I'm excited about it. I know you are. Uh, she finishes up and like wraps up the the rest, like the, the rep puts it away. She says, "So, where do we start?" Tell me, and she's gonna get up and start mm -hmm. like collecting all of the tools that were scattered kind of everywhere and put everything back, and we'll lead her down the hallway. Sounds good. Um, all right. Uh, we'll cut to a few hours later, um, as all of you have had kind of your, your moments to sort of, um, rest or not, as the case may be, working on various projects here and there. Um, I think in between, like, some downtime, also Peach would have probably gone into your guys, like, wherever anyone was staying or, like, resting or whatever, and, like, probably because wire probably had nothing she probably created like extra blankets like a pillow like maybe like helped make the bed comfier like just wherever people needed it yeah absolutely um yeah actually here's a, here's an idea like before before we there is a, there's a scene i think that we should have before before we uh do break it wasn't the scene that i was thinking of but you just reminded me so i'll say that as you're as you're sort of doing that peach you um at one point, you run into uh, into Liarlai, uh, mm -hmm. who is sort of um, she's when you find her, she appears to just sort of be um, wandering in just sort of just seemingly deep in thought, um, and she notices you before you before you kind of draw up level, and uh, you can see is that that sort of like wandering kind of like. Uh, easygoing, kind of almost thoughtful mm -hmm. gait that she had, sort of turns to a more purposeful one as she sees you and kind of walks towards you. Um, and she kind of looks at you and says, 
Sorry, I was uh, a little bit lost there. Um, it's okay. Hope I didn't interrupt your train of thought. Interrupted for the better, I think. Hmm. Uh, no, just just thinking about what comes next. What? Yeah. Just, and all of the others, those that I was seeing on a regular basis at the base and talking to about everything happening with them. And now I'm... Well, I'm far away from where I could help any of them. Hmm. Well, if they schedule an appointment, I can... Um, I mean, I don't know if you know this, but I could teleport you through vast quantities of space and time. Well, not time, but space, if you need, for appointments. It'd be uh, a kind of a mundane use, but... <laughs> Seems important. I don't know if it'll come to that, but I appreciate the thought. Does um, now seem like a good time to schedule that appointment? Yeah, it, it, it probably would be. Um, she kind of gestures over to one of the rooms that's nearby that... Uh, says step into my office <laughs> oh like right right now you meant I, I thought it was like a you know you, you'd find room in your schedule in like you know two to four weeks and I mean do you have something else going on right now I, I, I could do now works now's fine it's like awkwardly awkwardly follows her yeah like you 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 uh the door opens up into another very like a room very very clearly <laughs> like decorated. two metal is like two metal chairs yeah, like very is very clearly decorated by wire which is to say not at all um and but like it's it's not uh like when you go to a guy's apartment in college and it's like <laughs> there's like two furniture items <laughs> Yeah, one hundred percent. Having been like my freshman year, having been that guy, yes, absolutely that. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's it is not exactly the most comfortable place, mm -hmm. but it like all the other rooms here, it does the job. Um, and she uh, gestures over towards um, towards one of the uh, towards the the only chair in the room. Um, she says, "Please sit." Uh, she walks over and, like, sits on the edge of the bed um, and just... <sighs> okay. I'm sorry. The The appointment thing was mostly a joke. I, mean, I know. I, I'm, I'm here to talk if you need it, but I'm not going to make you say anything you don't want to. That's okay. I mean, there's... There's a lot that's happened. Are you doing all right? I mean, hmm. you know. I don't think that's a question that has a very easy answer. I don't think it ever is. It's like we keep asking that question to each other and it's like, maybe we should find a new one. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I know we didn't have any choice but to stop their ships from destroying everything, everybody, but I don't know, I've never been responsible for that kind of that kind of loss before. Um, I've worked with uh, mercenary crews in the past and um, even treated ex-military commonwealth and uh, and ascendancy alike 
And that's one thing that never gets easier. Until it does, and that comes with its own set of complications. Mm. I wish there was something that I could tell you to make it make it easier to deal with. I mean, I know we really didn't we didn't really have much of a choice, but I don't know, I've always it's been my life goal to build lives up, not to take them. And it's not really a change I particularly like. Well, the good news is fact that you feel that way is a very good sign. (laughs) Have you ever given any kind of grief counseling to anyone before? I have. It's not my particular area of expertise, but I've done it before, yes. I was just trying to get inside the head of um, Onira, the other the other me, I don't know, I've just just been thinking about her. Right. I read some of the reports uh, a while back. Some of the mission logs. Um, Wire actually had me draw up a profile, um, personality profile on her. What did you think? Well, without having most, frankly, most of the picture, it's hard to say, but from what was what I found in yours and your crew's reports and those filed by others who'd had contact, um, minimal at that. From what I could tell, your instincts are right, I think. This is a person who has been driven to the brink on by grief and loss. And I'm not sure... It's a terrible thing to lose anyone, but to lose so much in such a short period of time and then to be personally responsible for for the loss of a loved one. I don't know how she managed it, frankly. It's a terrible burden to bear. what I was able to find, from what I was able to put together. I suspect that this is someone who has who has never faced and processed their grief. But yeah. has instead used it to fuel it's a common thing to for someone experiencing grief of an unimaginable uh, um, magnitude to channel that into something else instead of instead of addressing the issues at hand. Yeah, it's easier. And, and I mean, so much was so much was taken from her in such a short period of time, and we're not the exact same, but something that something that I know. I don't like is when situation is out of my control and it seems like she had a lot of situations that were out of her control. So from what I was able to put together, almost everything, almost every aspect of her life was entirely out of control. It makes perfect sense that her choices led her to overcompensate and try to control everything. This is not something I put in the profile because it's nothing I have any hard evidence for. It's this is, <laughs> this is my disclaimer, but this is purely a 
an educated guess based on an on instinct born of years of hey, make your guess my guess is that the grief of losing her her crew her versions of your friends was bad but i think when she unknowingly killed her Vix. I think it broke her. I think so too. <sighs> Promise not to get upset. <laughs> but that's a little bit why I've been trying to get you to come see me. I know you haven't experienced anywhere close to the same. I know you're not her. I know that. But I don't want you to be. I don't want you to ever be. Uh, Thanks for looking out for me, I guess. I don't know. It's hard to know what to say to that. Um, I mean, I like to say we share no similarities, but I, I think that that would be not convincing. (laughs) It doesn't have to be me, but find someone or some way to process everything you've been through because you've been through a lot. I've read your reports too. Kind of nosy, don't you think? I have taken something of a special interest, but it's also my job. Special interest? make me spell this out, aren't you? Spell out what, doctor? (laughs) You're terrible. Yeah, that's why you're here. (laughs) She sort of stops for a moment. You can see that she's thinking. um, Mm -hmm. And then she just sort of looks up at you, kind of opens her mouth to speak, and then stands up um, and walks towards you. Okay, yeah? Um, mm-hmm. And just sort of starts, just leans in. Oh my god, yes. Peach leans in. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And she kisses you. <laughs> yes! Wait, does she come down? Da- Wait, Peach would stand up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Peach would stand up. I sort of assumed. I, yeah. I guess I didn't really get, but yes, I sort of assumed. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, And you sort of stand there locked in that moment for what seems like it could be forever. Um, And she sort of steps back after a moment and just, uh, hmm. Does that answer your question? Uh, um, uh, um, quite clearly, yeah. Uh, is, is it, I thought that was unprofessional. Well, but this was an unofficial appointment, right? So it doesn't count. <laughs> um, I, she sort of pulls up her, uh, opens her terminal and just looks and says, I don't have you in my planner. So. Good. Um, do you, do you want to go get um, saltines? You can see that she's like, she's sort of fighting with herself for a moment. And she says, Peach has a big smile. She hasn't smiled this big in a, in a long yeah, time, probably. Is it all right if we just stay here? Yeah, I, uh, I have some time. Good. Um, good. 
uh, and we'll like cut away. Uh, <laughs> oh my god, I'm freaking out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <sighs> All right, and I think that's where we're going to take our break. <laughs> Big win for the gays tonight on Infinite Horizon. <laughs> <Let's go this. laughs> ben, you came in just in time. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Great timing. Perfect. That was, um, that was uh, unexpected. I'm. Oh my. I'm obsessed Whew. with ev literally every single person on the crew getting their shit together before being on all. This is so fucking funny. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely incredible. All right, everybody, we're going to take a short break. We'll be back in just a little bit. Uh, stretch, hydrate, uh, walk around, whatever you need to do. We'll be right back. We'll see you in a few minutes. <laughs> and we're back, everybody. Um, welcome back. Uh, when we left finger off. Finger guns, right? Finger guns. That's, you know, when, like, it was one of those situations where I was trying to, I was so focused on transitioning us back in that I forgot absolutely every single word I know. So, um, welcome back, everybody. When we left off, the crew were having a variety of heart-to-hearts with various NPCs and other player characters uh, in the wake of the evacuation of the Resistance base. Uh, and now, coming on back in... Uh, oh, and also, like, something, like, kind of gay happened? I don't know. Um... <laughs> I don't know. Something like that. I don't know. Something Excuse like that me. I try to contribute <laughs> to group storytelling. Whole... <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know. Anyway. Uh, so we. Uh... <laughs> yes. oh, hard lips to lips. That was Incredible. great. <laughs> Incredible. Thank you, John Numa. As always, you have shown your quality here today. Uh... <laughs> the joy of tabletop gaming knows no end. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So diving on back in. Uh, we are going to cut ahead as. Uh, to um we're gonna say like a few hours down the road um as um bina you would you feel the that the sound like the uh the telltale sound sign like that, that sort of shuddering of the ship exiting ftl um and you you would all feel this uh at, in your various locations uh wherever that may be um and uh, each of you gets a ping on your terminal. Um, a m appear what is apparently an automated message from the ship's computers that just notifying you of an exit from a successful exit from FTL. Um, uh, yeah, so I will leave it to you where uh, where y'all want to be headed to. Although. Um, probably a fair fair guess that at this point in time um the rest of the crew is probably gathering on the bridge more than like yeah i would say yeah. bridge for sure i want to know where we are because we didn't even know where we were going right yeah. <laughs> well i believe becker had said that he knew of like a sort of like a place to sort of go so that you can like get your bearings basically before you pursue the lead of the uh, the syndicate out in the border worlds yeah um so uh yeah as y'all uh sort of make your way to the uh the bridge um this is probably the first time some, most of you have seen wire since y'all uh originally sort of boarded and determined your uh your course of action um she is currently sitting in the in the pilot seat um or rather at this ship is composed, the bridge is composed differently than that of um, Awakener, so it's not less of a pilot seat and more of sort of like a con station, basically. Um, and you can see that where she's seated there, Zaya is, seated, is like is standing kind of over her shoulder looking out the forward viewport, and um, Becker is actually standing at the forward viewport a little bit in front of where they, where they both are, just sort of staring out. Ahead of you, you can see where there is... Um, there is an asteroid belt, um, one of which, the closest and largest of which, uh, you can see there is a um, there is sort of a station that is that seems to be built into the side of it. But you looking at it, it doesn't even it almost doesn't look like a space station. It looks literally like somebody built a city in the side of the of the of the asteroid. Um, there are spires and everything sort of uh, poking up. From here, you can even see some of the skywalks that go in between some of those larger spires. Uh, there is an enormous dock 
uh, where you can see large freight ships going in and out. Um, there are the, the, sp- the nearby space is filled with uh, with space traffic. There are ships coming and going of various sizes. Uh, this is a um, a a stop that I think Bina would probably have not been to, but you've heard of it. Um, this is uh, 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 XR Station. Um, it is a major hub for mm, sh- like shipping and goods trafficking f- of a less than legitimate source. <laughs> um, it's it's a little bit like the commerce equivalent of uh, Marauder's Landing, where Marauder's Landing was more of like a hideaway for pirates and those on the run for the law. This is a bit more like uh, this is a bit more like extra legal uh, commerce, essentially. Um, International waters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, basically. Um, in fairness, that really has little to no meaning out here this far out into the border worlds, um, as there is no one uh, one uh, law that rules mm-hmm. the border worlds. So, uh, but you do know that it is a... a a whole city of built on um, the, the the thing that makes it unique and interesting is that it is one of the few places that is that could be described as as uh, a capitalist utopia that has nothing to do with the corporations at all. Um, one of the few places in the galaxy that can be that that can be said about. Um, that it was built out of the side of an asteroid. Yep. Yeah. Asteroid. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Right now, it's located kind of in a in an asteroid belt, kind of uh, in a system f- deep within the border worlds. Um, <clears throat> I would say that at this point, this is probably for context. This is probably the deepest into the border into the border worlds that you've been the entirety of the campaign. So um, it's pretty far out, um, away from any kind of major centers of uh, of any kind of uh, major government. Uh, such as they existed a while ago, but no longer. Um, there are rumors that this is a place that is governed entirely entirely by the uh, the shadowy criminal organization known as the Dealer's Court. Um, but as with any information about the Dealer's Court, those rumors are largely unsubstantiated, um, <laughs> or else. So, um, yeah, as you are, are pulling into that area uh, Becker kind of glances over his shoulder and says this place is it's probably the most uh, the most regulated that anything out here is out this far is but uh, still there's not exactly what I would call a rule of law best we uh, watch our backs and try to draw as little attention as possible while we're here but it's, it'll be a good place to resupply and pick up anything that we might need. Yeah, I think we might need food. I think it's definitely one of the things. Um, Solatines can't can only take us so far. Do we still have like currency in like my winnings from the race and shit, or like, are we, or are so. we gonna have to like do some weird bartering no, here again, think... like we did at the beginning of the campaign? But the thing is, I think that. Uh, wire was is is definitely smart enough to make sure that like any kind of uh, accounts that you might have that the resistance might have or that you personally might have have basically been like just like you have you have funds to draw on is what I'm trying to say but wire wire has ensured that they would be difficult to shut down or even like s- s- pin down specifically he's got so. us a bank account in space Switzerland yeah. and this <laughs> how much can a banana Bahamas? cost yeah. <laughs> 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 Space Swiss bank accounts. Yeah, pretty much. Love it. Um, or, or probably more like just like wads of cash and tin cans around the house. <laughs> but like secure, but like with high security. <laughs> oh, definitely. Some of it is is absolutely that. Some of it is just uh, is uh, accounts that have basically been um, secured, routed through various proxies and all kinds of stuff. Love like, that. yeah. Um. So, uh, yeah. 
you, uh, Wire is in the process of bringing you in. You can see that she's currently, like, in contact with the dock authority. Um, and she's, you can see she's, she's nodding while, like, listening to the transmission. Um, Becker walk, he, he steps away from the, uh, from the forward view screen and walks over towards where the rest of you are gathered. And he just says, this is, uh, this is where Riot, where, where Riot's last location uh, was last time we had any contact with them. Um, and uh, currently, Riot is our ticket in with this uh, with this syndicate. Any anything to know before we go in? Um, I mean, about what name name anything? It's there's there's a lot to know about any of this. Um, do they want anything in return uh, for anything if us coming in staying here because we're, we're very much we're not unknown at this point yeah um, well for the most part I think uh, <clears throat> I'd say what's better it's better to keep a low profile uh, as much as possible, but I the the reality is people who anybody who's out here not to be trusted, but at the same time probably aren't gonna exactly want to deal with the corpse. These guys don't give a shit about court protection. They 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 run their own thing. They run their own yeah own businesses, their own ships. They don't. The last thing they want is any control outside of their own little setup. So. Yeah, most most of the smugglers and uh, and uh, cargo runners that that come through th- through here probably aren't going to look t- uh, probably aren't going to want to take on any kind of corporate placed bounty, even if it is significant on principle. So. Um, I think it's also good to make it clear to whoever we end up talking to in any way or whatever, if they recognize us, we don't we don't want to change any of their way of life here. That's not we don't want we don't want any. They they get their own they get their little asteroid. They can keep it. We don't we're not here to make changes for them here. We're here to fuck with the corporations. Yeah, that might help. Uh, as for Riot, well. This uh, this whole meeting situation, the the in that they have for us with the uh, with this up up and coming syndicate, uh, that is as far as they're concerned, clearing their debts, which we own currently still. It's one of the few things, one of the few assets that we still own. So, uh, as far as riot goes. This is, this is paying off, whatever is between us. So, don't don't have to worry about them. Um, outside of that, uh, just try not to get, try not to piss anybody off or draw any attention. We'll have to change up our methods. I feel like historically we have not done that super well. Yeah, Patch told me about the t- the the time that you uh, the way that y- that you all met. Mm. Maybe uh, try to avoid beating up thugs in an alleyway, as much as possible. Only if they really, really deserve it. I know you're joking, but seriously, draw as little attention as possible here. Yeah, I hear you. Uh. Zaya just sort of rolls her shoulders and just says, well, uh, I am definitely going to go get a drink or several, probably going to bring them on board actually, because she points, she points at wire and she says her stocks aren't exactly mm, up to standards. Uh, at this point, Wire is has finished like communicating with the dock authority and just sort of like shoots sort of a sideways glance at Zaya and but doesn't say anything. Um, and 
after after a moment just sort of like uh swivels around in the in the chair she says um i've already tapped the uh the dock security feeds and um at the very least i will be able to keep an eye on on things Well, let's go and let's be quiet. All right. Um, wire turns back around, and as you, uh, she, uh, she then proce- proceeds to bring in the, uh, the ship to, to dock. Um, the docks here are, uh, they take up basically the entirety of the lower level of this place. Um, they are they are expansive um, to the point actually Bina you're surprised to find not very many places have this um, this capacity of, of the uh, of whatever docking area they have but they actually have the capacity for um, full on like large cargo freighters to actually enter the uh, the the docking area where like the front of it is sort of um, shielded from uh, has sort of an atmospheric shield Um at the entrance to the docks um it's a little bit like if anybody uh anyone familiar with with mass effect it's a little bit like what the citadel's docks are like where there's like this this uh this sort of big uh atmospheric shield that keeps in all the atmosphere but like ships large ships including enormous cargo haulers can actually enter and dock directly with the station um so, uh, Wire's ship has no problem reaching one of the docking corridors that extends slowly and connects. And after a moment, uh, Wire, after looking at, at, at everything and monitoring everything, she goes, all right, we are, all right, we're in, we're, we're docked. We're cleared for disembarking. And she looks over at uh, Becker and he nods all right. He looks at all the rest of you and says, "You all coming with, or is somebody staying?" I think we're all coming with, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm coming. All right. Let's uh, let's do this. We'll be back, and if we're not, Zaya nods, ready to raise hell. You're always ready to raise hell, Zaya. Yeah, I always think it's a good idea to remind people every once in a while. I guess I want to keep people on their toes. <laughs> um, Anybody got, you know, if we're going to try to keep a low profile since we've been, you know, Galaxy's Most Wanted for a while, maybe hoods. Yeah, maybe I figure glasses, we have like nondescript clothing on. Maybe, like yeah, hood, <laughs> neutral like, colors, maybe glasses. Tane looks down at his suit and says, I think there's nothing I can really do. Get you like a cloak or like a jacket to put over it. I'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> a really bulky cloak around Dan. He's going to do her like thing, her oversized coat thing where she pretends she's an oversight with two arms. Yep. And just like her, does the little cross arms around her, her, mid, her middle and then her other two arms. Oh, just a normal two armed oversight. Just yep. oh, not definitely not being over. <laughs> <laughs> And Mason runs back in suddenly, and it's got like a black hoodie and like a cap and like a pair of like round spectacles. The nondescript yes. celebrity look. Yes. <laughs> Incredible. The Marvel's Marvel's disguise look. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no. I just found I probably got to like, get like a random cloak or something and just wrap it around me and over my helmet. I'm still wearing my helmet though, but over my helmet, helmeted head. And just You're actually probably good, actually. Yeah, <laughs> I think I'm pretty okay. Cam off, it's just kind of cam off, get up. Yeah. I think he does like um, wrap the cloak around so it covers the like kind of little core in his chest because that is an addition that most mm-hmm. wouldn't have. So it covers that up and then. Yeah. I feel like Peach just yeah. has like a sweater on or like something, something like <laughs> super basic. Like... <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Perfect. Oh my God. Yeah, Incredible. Vito was wearing those. I don't have yeah. mine. I don't have my glasses. Out of all the glasses me, you it. have, those are the ones you had by you. <laughs> oh, I have like eight pairs next to me. Those ones just I, like, that was fun. I thought that might be the case. <clears throat> um, 
Also, I will say I would have already talked to Wire about everything at this point. I sure, just didn't sure. think it was right needed a scene. That's fair. Yeah. Understandable. Um All right. Are you taking anybody with you? Any of the NPCs? Any uh No. Um I think we need to. Okay. Fair enough. Um, I mean, I obviously wouldn't stop Ada from coming if Ada was to come, but I think we might stop Jade from coming. <laughs> like, hey, April is going to be real upset with us if you do get yeah. into trouble. Well, really, <laughs> it's one of those situations where, like, uh, <laughs> where Jade looks like he's about to, like, say, uh, like, ask if he can come, and Sedona just sort of reaches over and just puts a hand on his shoulder and just... <laughs> uh... <laughs> I give Jade a little an unapologetic look, like, yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. So you'll you'll disembark, um, stepping out uh, onto this large uh, loading dock. Um, so you, uh, hmm. as you uh, as you step out into this, ooh, excuse me, um, this busy loading bay, um. You can see basically as you step out, what you you walk through a docking corridor and you end up on this sort of uh, this platform where there's all kinds of like cargo boxes around, um, maintenance and refueling equipment set up and ready to go. You can actually already see where some of the dock workers have already started uh, connecting some of the refueling tubes to uh, to Wire's ship and have begun doing this. Uh, um, and wire kind of following you out and sort of speaking with the uh, with some of with the near the nearest dock authority and is like speaking with them as you all proceed on into the uh, into the main uh, corridor that leads in into uh, what is essentially a tram system. It's a it's a it's a short like kind of a tram system, and you all you all board along with numerous dock workers and uh, passengers. Merchants, smugglers, all kinds, uh, all kinds of people, and uh, the tram takes off, leading you deeper into the city itself. Uh, eventually, you find yourself uh, on rails, fully out uh, in like the uh, just on rails that just sort of going through space along the surface of the asteroid, in between some of the larger spires. Uh, eventually you come to a stop at a station and Becker nods. He says, this is us. Um, and as you disembark from the plat onto the platform, you find yourselves in a bustling metropolis that if it wasn't for the, uh, sort of in, if it wasn't for the fact that you're looking out into what is clearly space, it would look like any other city. Um, like, uh, like any other city at nighttime. Um, it is the surface of, uh, of the asteroid, uh, is, um, at least this half of it is covered with, uh, with a sprawling metropolis. Um, there are, co that is basically largely contained by, um, multiple domes. Um, the spires themselves sort of, uh, rise high through those through those domes um, out into space itself. Um, almost as if the domes were sort of built around them. Um, but here, you are essentially as close to being on the surface of an asteroid without a suit that you will ever be. Um, and it is overwhelming. It is a highly trafficked area. It is... Uh, there is a there are numerous marketplaces in your immediate vicinity. Um, it it genuinely is like being back on Anzalon Prime Peach. It is it is that it. Yeah. Um. So, uh, you follow Becker through the crowds, um, as he sort of wends his way through, leading you to a down kind of some some back streets that lead off of kind of the, out of this main plaza that you found yourselves in. Um, it probably takes, the whole thing probably takes about maybe 10 minutes or so, but you find yourself outside of a very divey looking kind of bar. 
uh, very similar to the last one where the last time, the last place you met when you first met Riot. Um, She's consistent. Yeah. So uh, Becker looks inside, kind of peeks in, and just nods and, uh, to all of you and gestures for you to follow. And as he steps inside, um, you s- see a uh, surprisingly, given how like the divey is sort of the exterior looks like, surprisingly um, not. It's not like the dingiest place you've ever seen. It's pretty clean. It's clean. It, it is kept like low lights. Um, there is a sort of like foggy haze in this place, but it's not. I don't know. It, it's it's not. It, it doesn't feel uncomfortable. It has that that sort of that feel of a divey kind of bar, but without the like discomfort that also comes with being in one. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, you see, uh, Becker leans across the bar and talks to talk, talks to one of the bartenders, who uh, looks at him, nods, kind of looks around the bar, and just sort of points into a corner. Um, and moving, kind of gazing in that direction, you recognize a um, a uh, Terran with uh, like full on like mohawk, no longer bright purple, but now just like an acid green. Um, and you you recognize uh, Riot, who is just sort of sitting in the corner talking to a few uh, a few other disreputable looking sorts. Um, as they sort of knock back a drink and nod and continue talking. Uh, As you all kind of make your way through the crowd in that direction, they eventually look up and see you. uh, And uh, as you approach, you can can hear them turning to the others and saying, These uh, these ones are for me, so uh, piss off. Uh, And the... uh, the others around the table kind of like glance up at you with some with like scowls or uh, or just sort of searching expressions, and they look uh, at at Riot. And she goes, "I told you, I'd buy you the next round. Just go. This is business." Uh, and they get up and uh, walk away. She says, "Well, well, well. If it isn't my good friends from uh, remind me where we met." Sulon, right? Yeah. That sounds right. Yeah, right. Just, uh, keep people I can manage. Locations, not so much. Um, and they, they lean forward. So, this is a surprise. Uh, Becker nods. He says, sorry about the, uh, unscheduled visit. We've had a bit of, uh, well, we've had a few setbacks. And he sits down. Uh, it's another statement. <laughs> Well, if I'm not much, unless I'm much mistaken, this is the stench of desperation, newly found desperation, as far as I can tell. Am I about right on that? I think it's just the smell of alcohol here, maybe. You are not entirely wrong about that. So, we need to speed up our timetable then. Uh, Yeah. Well, very much against our will, but we have no other choice. Fair enough. Um, well, it just so happens that you caught me on a good day, because I was actually just about to call you. Uh, she nods, or they nod to, Be- to Becker, who uh, says, "Oh, did you manage to?" Uh, she not, or they nod and say, like, "Yeah, I uh, was able to finally secure you a meeting." Um, so, it's all really good timing. Hmm. Um, yeah. Do we have a date or time? Or oh. just whenever we please? Well, it, uh, I hadn't quite set that up yet because I was waiting, waiting for our, uh, our man here to, I was gonna, uh, to weigh in on that. But it seems since you're here, I don't have to wait. So, what do, what do you think? Soon as possible, judging by the uh, downcast looks in your expressions. Yeah, soon, soon, soon would be good. Right, oh, right, oh. Mm, uh, they look over at, at you, Mason, and just, 
nonsense. Good to see you again, Cupface. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Likewise. And they say, give me a mo. Uh, and they uh, they pull up their terminal and just start. You can see that they start like quickly like um, composing a message and they send it. Well, now we just play the waiting game. So can I buy any of you a drink? Or better yet, can anyone buy me a drink? I'm a bit tapped. Yeah, I I, I gotcha. And Paige I'm just sorry. gets up and and I feel like she looks to see what what right. But Riot is drinking to know what to order for them. <laughs> yeah. Um, it looks like what it is essentially like you're actually shocked to see like it looks like a pretty like fair quality Anzalonian ale. Like it is it is basically like something that is mostly drunk by like politicians at their like at like formal affairs. Basically, it's probably not like the best quality version of it, but it's not mm -hmm. bad. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to think of an Anzalonian okay. sounding name for alcohol. Something like <laughs> medallion or something yeah. really dramatic yeah, yeah. like that. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. So um, it might be a real alcohol here on Earth, I have no idea. I really wouldn't I'm be surprised. I'm sure it is. That sounds like a great name for a for a beer. <laughs> um yeah. yeah, so Peach goes up and orders a bunch of those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, easy enough. Um you yeah, you manage to uh, to get a hold of a of a flight of those and kind of bring them over and uh Right, goes, so, what's new? I like the beach. <laughs> a, a, a lot is new. A lot is new. I'm guessing all bad from uh, that particular expression. Like, like 99% bad. I see. You're a... Uh, corporate resistance not going quite the way you planned then you know we've had a few setbacks but we're we're still we're doing okay we're 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 fine sure sure that explains why you're here in this little uh nowhere little place out in the middle of uh extra nowhere looking for me I actually does. always wanted to visit XR Station, so this is kind of cool. It's not the worst place in the galaxy, to be honest with you. I mean, have you been to Mar Marauder's Landing? Marauder's Landing is yes. probably one of the worst places I've ever been. Um, fun, but terrible. I'm surprised you got out of there alive. Well, it was close. I got into... Uh, around the time that I'd hit my 12th fist fight, uh, I figured it was probably time to get out. Mm. But and I will be honest with you, I did start at least three of them, but that last one wasn't me at all. You just got to be careful where you're looking there and who you're looking at, and also whose wife you sleep with. But okay. Um. But yeah, yeah. I wish we didn't have business, so I could anyway. <laughs> right. Looks around. Says. Well, uh, not to, and then you you hear like a beep, and Riot pulls up, <laughs> saved from the awkward conversation by a timely message, uh, and they start like looking through it and go, "Well, you're in luck. Uh, it seems that there has been an opening in the schedule for, uh, actually, for tomorrow evening, and we're, it's not far away." Uh, a, a, Probably only a couple hours by FTL jump. Uh, okay, that sounds good. Good to me. Convenient. Mm -hmm. We'll take that. Right. Well, there is one tiny little detail uh, before we uh, before we go. Just a quick little piece of business that we need to take care of. No big deal at all. Of course. Just uh -huh. just a little thing. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. I just. Uh, I did promise those gentlemen over there that I'd get their next drink, and as I said, I am tapped, so, um, also, I have a tab here that I cannot pay off, uh, because again, tapped. <sighs> and if I try to walk out that door, uh, without paying, uh, again, well, 
uh, our good friend behind the bar over there uh, will hit the little panic button that he's got underneath the bar and uh, those you see those those panels over there those are those are definitely defense turrets and yep. I'd rather not yep. get on the end right of have you ever learned from anything a day in your life before? never on purpose okay well that makes okay. sense to me <laughs> do we have enough to cover what what how how big is your tab let me show you. Uh, and they just swipe it over to you, to you, Tan. <laughs> it's it's a moderate sized tab. It's not it's not exorbitant, but it's you know. Oh, how gosh. tall is this person? Like how <laughs> large are they? <laughs> like, uh, Riot. Like, yeah, Riot. Riot isn't put. Riot is of average build. Um, sort of a little broader in the shoulders, but You're like, human, right? Uh, Terran. 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 Yeah. So, so kind of, yeah. Uh, with looks like looks like probably Keldro or Anzalani. It's honestly hard to tell. Um, you put you is this all alcohol have you drank this much well, there, there's it's... some snacks on there at least one of those things is a snack oh yeah okay yeah the mixed nuts yeah yeah you don't need to okay. sound, <laughs> sound don't need to sound judgmental say on i mean we all cope with with war in our own ways can all we right. get some dinioka before we go because dive bar food is sounding really good right now after they being on wire ship really really mediocre one here uh Bummer. i yeah okay I we've been eating rounds. saltines and coffee for the last 48 hours well in that, so that case it's gonna amazing. be fantastic yeah i'm excited uh, and i'm yeah i'm gonna go to the bar and <laughs> <laughs> i will the, the the group of people who are who we saw with them when we came in yeah. are they by the bar uh they're they're at a table near it yeah they're at a table near the bar <laughs> he's just gonna walk up to them and be like um, my friend over there would like to know what would you would like to drink. Uh, one of them, <laughs> a uh, <laughs> a very burly looking Keldro, looks at you, uh, and he just goes, mm, "I think we're about done, actually." He like leans over, says, "Word of advice, that one's pretty slippery." We know. Hmm. Get everything in writing. Twice. Uh, and he leans back in his seat and says, Thanks, though. You got it, dude. I'm going to turn around and I'm going to go to the bar. <laughs> and I'm going to... You know, would probably wouldn't say that, but I'm... <laughs> you know what? Well, yes, yeah, she would. That's where yeah, she's that's at right now. Why not? That's where she's at right now. Um, and I would like to... I'm going to settle Riot's tab. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm going to get a handful of mediocre, greasy bar foods mm -hmm. to pass out to my friends yeah. because, just like greasy dive bar food after a week, <laughs> a few days of eating saltines mm -hmm. and rations is gonna taste very good, even oh, if yeah. it isn't great for our stomach. So Absolutely. I'm gonna yeah. come back with a handful of things for everybody, probably to go, so we can get going. But fair enough. All right. Um, yeah. Yeah, I wasn't saying that it was a bad coping mechanism. It's just. This is a lot for someone your size to be drinking. Like I, coping it's honestly mechanism. Improved. What do you think I'm coping with? You think that I have a, a like? You think my life's this bad? This is celebratory drink. This is celebrate. I'm celebrating. You know how terrible it was living on Sulon for so long. All those rules and regulations and politicians and it's just mm -hmm. it's terrible. Vina comes back with with the <laughs> cartons and says, "So it looks like we own more of your debt. So are you ready to go?" I absolutely am, especially when you put it that way. Uh, and they yeah. stand up and just like reach over and grab a pe like one of the Dinioka. Like, oh yeah, no, just, free, freely, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so I take it you've got a ship because I may or may not have lost mine to gambling. So uh, it's impressive, uh, actually. You're a mess. Proud of it. Thank there you for are noticing. Mess. Let's go. <laughs> and I mean, love <laughs> Riot. <laughs> They are our mess. We do kind of we yeah. think, yes, they are our mess. <laughs> so, uh y'all we'll say uh y'all make your way back to uh to Awakener or uh to Riot, uh, Wire Ship. Does Wire Ship have a name? Uh no. Sh no. That's right. We did talk about this. Yeah, Wire about is this. not in the habit of naming ships. It has like it that's has like numbers point, yeah. on the side. Well, we did yeah. talk about this. It makes Bina unendingly <laughs> anxious because that's bad luck to, to not name your if ship. You, <laughs> if you if you talk about if you've ever asked Wire about it, which I imagine somebody probably has, um, I absolutely have. Wire's answer to that is it's better not to get attached to things you might have to ditch later. <laughs> 
Um, Bina, Bina would be like, okay, but it's bad luck to fly a ship with no name. Wire. <laughs> so, <laughs> Um, That's how that went. <laughs> this is a fight they have every every other day. <laughs> every other, yeah. Whenever Both we're out. not in dire straits yeah. or like absolutely losing our goddamn minds, it happens. That's every so you, every that's couple what, so days. You thought about naming your ship. <laughs> Bina, <laughs> like, drop it. I can't. Why? Are I've been thinking of names. <laughs> yeah. not considering. Like to pitch you a few. I emailed you some names that I thought. Just like might... forearms. Oh, just like oh. show his piece of paper and just. <laughs> 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 it's what it's what it's what Bina and Wire count as socializing. It's what... yes, yes, yeah. That's yeah. how the most of their yeah interactions yeah. go. <laughs> Is they're bonding. They yeah. won't admit it, but they're bonding. Absolutely. So. uh We'll say we're gonna we'll, we'll cut back to to uh, Wire's ship um, as um, Riot is sort of just like s- sort of explaining some some of the uh, some of the stuff. So some things to keep in mind. First of all, these are some serious people. These are um, nobody that you want to cross. Uh, and I listen. That's me saying that. You don't want to cross these people. I don't cross these people. Uh, they are... Um, how do I put it? They are very dedicated to what they do and are literally death on anything that threatens that. So as long as you prove yourselves not to be a threat or a liability or in any way a problem, uh everything will be fine that I said think we can do that that said their leader very fair fairer than basically oh I'd say 99.999% of any other leadership of any other syndicate you might run into in the border world so it's you know it's uh just some things to keep in mind um <clears throat> Uh, I've spoken with with her myself once. Um, we have a we have established a working relationship. Um, but even so, uh, me being someone on their good side, I would say best not to risk anything uh, mm, compromising that. So. Um, Thanks for the warning. I think that's everything. Uh, try not to embarrass me. No, we would never. We'd leave that up to you. Um, that's a good call. But... Leave everything up to the experts. Mm. <laughs> uh, so, uh, which bunk is mine? <laughs> There's so many comfortable ones to choose from. Uh, that one. Great. I'll take it. Uh, and they stretch and just go, Oh, I'm going to sleep for a really long time. Probably the whole journey. I uh, Oh, here. You're going to need these. Uh, and they like yeah. sort of swipe over the co- uh, coordinates to uh, to the computer, uh, the, the shipboard computer, and go, uh, Right then. See you oh, later. I- you, you might need this. The one pillow there is super thin. It's not not good for sleeping at all. And he just literally like holds out a pillow to her. Look at that. Uh, yeah, they take it and go. You just that, watch like a thick pillow just form in their hand. That is a really impressive trick. We're going to have to talk about that later. Assuming I remember because I'm quite drunk right now. Uh, and they take it and just oh, like, doubt it. walk off down, down the hall. Um... Bina leans into Peach and says, I think you should tell them that you can only make pillows. I think that is a great idea. Mm-hmm. Your superpower is pillows, and you're leading the resistance, and that's your superpower. That is the truth, isn't it? Mm-hmm. That's all I can do. Mm-hmm. Um, Wire is looking at the coordinates uh, on, that as they appear on the screen, and she just shakes her head and says... What are we doing? Is this, is this really, is this really where we're at to go begging for scraps at the door of a crimes, organized crime syndicate? There's honestly nowhere else to go. We don't have a lot of options right now. I mean, our main allies are under blockade. 
We're scattered. Well, the other powerful governments are ba barely standing. It pains me to go here to this in particular. No, we've been busy, but I do think we need to talk about Sulan at some point, because as soon as we're able, I don't think we should leave them like yeah. that. I agree. I've been keeping an eye on the whole situation. It hasn't escalated, at the very least, but still very much, the blockade's still very much there. Well, that's one of the reasons we're here, right? Back up, hopefully. I know. Just needed to hear it from somebody else. Is it a good idea? Probably not. But at least it's an idea. It's a okay. path to take. At least we know they're not allied with the corpse. <laughs> you know what? Small else with that, actually. Small yeah. victories. Yeah. Yeah. I'll take about anything right now. Let's go. Uh, and wire begins uh, the uh, um, the departure sequence. Um, what exactly are like the capabilities of these of this syndicate? Like, do we get any kind of briefing from um, so, Decker about this? Rec recalling uh, earlier, like you got a briefing a long, long time ago, like back before you set out to rescue uh, mm -hmm. Awakener. Um, but essentially, this is a fast-growing syndicate um, in very recent months, actually. Like, probably only within um, within the last maybe four, five months or so have you started actually hearing, like, any whispers about them at all. Mm -hmm. And what it seems like, the, what you know about the syndicate is that, is that it was definitely a minor player for a long time. Like, one of the ones that was ignored both by the regulators and by other syndicates. Um, mm -hmm. But all of a sudden, a few months ago, it fully started turning around and like basically becoming sort of a monopoly in the uh, sector of space that in the sector of the border worlds that you are currently in. Mm -hmm. um, excluding, of course, XR Station and uh, now, as of now, excluding XR, ter XR Station and territory that is currently controlled by the other largest syndicate in the region, which is the Alziris Crime Syndicate. Um, okay. So, uh, yeah. From all reports, uh, it seems that s what stands out about this one, as opposed to any of the other hundreds of, of crime syndicates out in the border worlds, um, this one stands apart because this is the only one that you've seen uh, or heard of at all that seems to be not using the the, the general populace in their territory as like any sort of way of exploit exploiting any kind of um, like cash flow from them either through protection rackets or through just straight up uh, extortion or uh, or coercion, but have actually brought the populace into the operation. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Um, which is probably uh, one of the reasons why it has grown so quickly. Yeah. Um. Okay, this is or isn't the Elzirus Crime Syndicate? No, this is not the Elzirus. This is not. Okay, that's what. Through a second, you said it, and I was like, wait, is that? No, no, okay, no. Got the, it. The Elzirus Crime Syndicate is uh, is. Okay, because I was like, I thought we were not on board. With them. No, no. The, the Elzirus <laughs> Crime Syndicate is currently uh, has been the major player in this region of of the Border Worlds for a few years now, like many years, um, and it kind of became the big power in this area um, not that long ago. Um, Mason would know this for sure, but it was not that long after mm -hmm. Mason's own discharge from the regulators. Um, the um, the syndicate that you're that you're currently like looking at, the one that you're that you're meeting with the leadership of, is one that basically was a nobody until very recently, okay, and then quickly yeah. rose up and absorbed many of the other small syndicates in the area. 
Does this and, one have a name? Um, it does, but I actually don't have that. I was looking for that for those notes, but I don't know where they went. So okay. uh, the we'll answer say is we'll say we've been yes. saying it the whole time. Yes, absolutely. And then you give it to me for my notes after the game. <laughs> I've been looking for the notes, and I don't know where they are. That's so, okay. Uh, but yes, it does have a name. Um, cool. So uh, this this uh, this syndicate basically has now in the last in the most recent months is now basically they are what you would know is that they're they're in a the they're sort of in a standstill with the Alziras Syndicate, where they don't have the resources to directly oppose the Alziras Crime Syndicate. Um, but the Alziras Crime Syndicate, uh, for whatever reason, has not moved on them either. Um, so they've basically sort of they're they're sort of locked in kind of a standstill at this point. Um, cool. The with sort of opposing each other, and very clearly, like they get into scraps a lot. Like it happens a lot, but. Um, neither one they're currently they're in a very tense equilibrium in this sector so yeah <clears throat> that's okay. what you would know awesome um, but they, just, they definitely have the manpower that we didn't really lack especially compared to the corpse I mean I feel like we could appeal to them they may have their own operation going on, but I feel like we're at least somewhat on the same page. There's a Venn diagram with at least a little bit of overlap. I mean, they don't want the corpse overreaching on their territory, and we don't want that either. So, I mean, that's a pretty big piece of ground to stand on. Um, Becker kind of shoots a sideways glance at you, Mason, kind of making eye contact. Um, and she says, I have a feeling that they're not going to be... These syndicates are... They're not going to be swayed by any sort of... Anything beyond their immediate scope. Chances are they see the threat of the corporations as something that either isn't coming for them or something that they deal with tomorrow. We, we've got to come with to them with something else. Something that is of use to them. And right now, we don't have a lot. We have a lot of very unique skill sets. We just kind of have to do what we did before all of this. Barter and trade. We do something for them, they do something for us. Even Stevens in the end, but we both benefit. I don't know what and that I, looks like, but... And they might have some material interest in taking from the corporations. I mean, yeah. I wouldn't be above theft. At this point, yeah, <laughs> we got. <laughs> uh, Becker looks over oh, at you again, it. Mason, and just says, I mean, I've been out here gathering intel for a few months, but you're the one who's gotten real experience out here with the regulators. Yeah, that's true have any insights to offer on any of this? Well, perhaps... Perhaps we can give them information about another crime syndicate. Perhaps we can convince them that we could take care of a certain one. You're talking about giving them the Alzira Syndicate. Something like that, yes. What would that what would be the implications of that? I'm not I'm not quite sure. She just kind of looks between Becker and, and Mason. I haven't I haven't fully formed the an idea or a plan on that yet. Well, it's a good thought, maybe. We'd have to figure out how to leverage that. We, for whatever reason, these two haven't gone at each other yet. We might just be able to sell ourselves as an advantage in that particular conflict. Like, I understand that we can't really afford to get involved in anybody else's disputes, but... 
it might be worth it in this case. I think Taylor just quietly watching everyone, everyone's reaction to this. I mean, again, super out of Bina's bounds. She probably just looks like apprehensive, but trying to be focused. Like, <laughs> I think Paige is like full like Mason is Mason Becker briefing me here on this like thing that's very much out of my wheelhouse, and I'm trying to follow along. <laughs> Okay, I think you would look to uh, Mason and Becca and just be like, if we do sell ourselves as an asset, um, are we going to be what soldiers, spies? What exactly are we going to be doing for them? It's got to be something that we can... Be our terms. Yeah, but it's got to be something tangible, something, something that they can use, something that will actually give them an advantage in their conflict with the Alzira Syndicate. My guess, they probably won't want to, even if even if we do strike an accord of some kind, my guess is they're not going to, one way or another, they're not going to want to help us until they, uh, until they deal with the major threat at their doorstep. Okay. Um, so do we have any information on the opposing syndicate? Uh, Becker sort of looks over at you, Mason, <laughs> again. Well, I sure do. More than I'd care to. <sighs> Can we go somewhere private? Wire looks around and just goes, sure. Um... I suppose we could uh, use Awakener's um, observation room. Yeah, that's the best. That should, that should work, right? All right. So y'all make your way uh, to to um, Awakener, uh, boarding boarding the ship, and uh, <coughs> uh, now wires ship fully in like in FTL en route to the uh, to the coordinates that riot gave you um you gather once again sort of in the uh, in the um uh, observation room turned um uh operations deck um as you have the uh, the table that sort of extends out from the floor itself uh out and projecting any sort of information uh holographically above the surface um Mason, your all of all of the files that you had on the uh, on the Alzirus Syndicate and all of your previous investigations, basically everything you had, has been digitized and has been uh, over your months of like being on Awakener and all that has kind of been digitized and uploaded into Awakener's computers. So it's all there, in spite of the fact that you were forced to leave a lot of it behind on the base. Like mm -hmm. it's all here. And so Mason just kind of like pulls his glasses off and the hat. It all started with. What, around the time I kind of got <laughs> with, with the regulators and Mason kind of pulls his hood off and he's going to start kind of just going into a long like explanation yeah so well like showing files and like sweeping up and like connecting things and you're like giving us a presentation right now <laughs> yeah, I love it kind yeah. of <laughs> really um, bad animations of uh, um, <laughs> what yeah in this moment all of you I think probably for the first time are seeing like the true extent of Mason's like his Mason's yeah. detective brain where you've got you have essentially the like the digital version of the like sort of connections board right where Mason has like all of his old investigations um, from his time with the regulators investigating uh, corruption in within the ranks of the regulators, the people who have, been, who were specifically formed and uh, uh, to, in order to combat the syndicates, um, see like uh, evidence of their corruption in, in taking being on the take of at least of several syndicates, but all of whom Mason has managed to trace back to the Alzira syndicate. Um, and those are just his investigations from his time as a regulator. Since then, there have been a lot of additional things. From that point, you start seeing 
le- fewer and fewer uh, official records and files and things like that, and more like news clippings and like articles that have been sort of sort of pulled from from like the from the extranet and pulled and on, uh, like onto this this board. And Mason is sort of having arranged the whole thing instead of in like a chaotic spider webbing jungle. Uh, jumble uh, more into like a like a, a logical sort of like uh, point to point um, sort of pathway. Um, <clears throat> uh, the the frustrating thing that you can see as you're watching this and Mason is expositing all of this is that you're you're able to see the fact that in spite of the fact that there's a lot of evidence that links the regulators and like various other like. Uh, operations within the border worlds to, and in fact in Commonwealth and Ascendancy space back to the uh, Alzira Syndicate there is never anything that is concrete enough that like that you can like it's all it's all stuff that would never hold up like it's it's a lot of it is evidence that is tied in using Mason's intuition and guesswork um, like very little of it is anything that you can you, you start to get a picture basically of Mason's time in the regulators and just from the things that Mason has himself has sort of said about his time there you're starting to get a picture of just what it must have been like for uh, for Mason years back being what seemingly one of the only people willing to investigate the these issues the this kind of corruption um, because the reality is I, I would say those of you like Peach and Taeon, those of you who are who are who are often uh, enmeshed in logistics and stuff like that, you trust Mason, but even you looking at this, a lot of this stuff is like it's definitely held together by guesswork. Yeah. A lot of it is held together by, by guesswork. Logical, very logical. It makes a lot of sense. Like you can see absolutely the picture, but there's not enough to for any kind of official yeah. action to have been taken. Yeah. Is the kind of stuff that, like, if someone came to town with, but like, yeah, let's do it. But if town went to anyone higher up, they'd be like, uh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And this has been the greatest case. Yeah, no, this is incredible. And I've constantly come up against walls. Yeah. Red tape does that. Um, what did we learn? Did we learn anything that, and specifically that we can like give to the syndicate, or is just this? Do you think we can just give this whole thing to them as this above game? Like, did we learn anything specific that um, we can any any? There is one piece. There is one piece of infor- important information, which is that if Mason's, uh, and I'll, I'll also say this. You know what? Um, actually. Uh, Drac, I'm gonna go ahead and say this is probably be an inside spend. Ooh, an inside okay. Spend. Mm-hmm. So what's what's I think that it's again? Just a, I'm pretty sure it's just a three point spend from your uh, from your intellect. Three intellect, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. Um, so uh, I'm trying to remember exactly how intellect works. There's one version of it where like if you if I call for it, then I think you can ask follow up questions. I think I'm not sure. I'll I'll I'll. If somebody wouldn't mind like hmm. looking in that like looking at uh, looking that up for me, um, but so I'll I'll give you this information. Um, you're looking at this. There's a there's almost no chance like so that that the the syndicate that you're approaching for help. Uh, there's almost no chance that they don't know this already. Like that's pretty clear, okay. um, especially being out here. But you know, uh, but what one piece of information that you see is the fact that. Everything that Mason has shown you leads to one very sort of inescapable conclusion, and that is that the Alziris Syndicate has the regulators, at the very least in this section, in this sector, has the regulators in their pocket. At the very least in this sector. Okay. Caitlin's in. I'm ready. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's unclear. It's unclear. Uh, it, it seems like even Mason isn't sure how far reaching that corruption is. It could just be local, like the regulators assigned to this sector. Um, it could just be them. You're not sure. It makes sense that it would just be them because, like, that's a that is a very big organization. Um, yeah. But, uh, but it's unclear from this. Even it seems like even Mason doesn't know. 
um, based on what he has on, on this board. But that is a very clear and obvious advantage that the Alzira Syndicate has. Okay. So yeah, so looking at his kind of mouth, like, um, they have the regulators, at least this sector's regulators, in the palm of their hand. That could be some useful information. Yeah. Hmm. But I was thinking too. <laughs> Becker kind of is looking at this and nods and looks over at you, Mason, and says, Mason, I know it's a bit of probably a bit of a sore spot for you, but how how confident do you feel that we could break their hold on the regulators? I would love nothing more. I don't know how easy it would be, but I'd like a challenge. Yeah. I guess it also depends on how far up the ranks this goes. I would guess pretty far. Yeah. Is that we're, go we're going to promise? So like you said, there's no way the syndicate is going to aid us without us aiding them. Are we going to promise to, I guess, break that chain between the syndicate and them? It would take a powerful allying weapon out of their hands. It'll certainly level the playing field out here, for sure. It might even give them, it might, might even give them some power to some bargaining power with the with the Alzira syndicate at the very least it'll for it'll force the Alzira syndicate to back off and re reassess and that might just be the window that we need I do have one one question um when these two syndicates do meet head to head because it seems like we're going to make it at least easier for it to happen do we know what that's going to look like and are we okay with that I am if you guys are. I mean, we'll meet with them. We'll see what they have to say and what we can offer what we what we need to offer. So yeah, okay. I'm on board. Okay. I'm on board. I just wanted to make sure we were all aware of what could come of it. We need to get help to Sulan. Um, <clears throat> Wire has been completely silent this whole time. Um, but Bina, you can feel for the first time some emotion slipping, like sort of breaking through the cracks in Wire's own sort of like focus. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Um, and what you feel, um, mm, you know what? I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to have an, in, an insight spend from you, too. I'm going to have an insight spend from you, too. Yeah. Done. Done. Okay. okay. Mm. So, uh, you feel a couple things. The first of which is that the emotion that you're feeling right now, you know for absolute certain, isn't because of, like, necessarily because it's particularly strong emotion or because it's, like, you know, that's, like, there's, like, why are sort of, like, letting some of it through? You're realizing that what's happening is that wire is cracking a little bit. And that's why you're feeling what you're feeling. Wire, on the outside, looks like her usual calm, controlled, collected self. But wire is, like, underneath, you can feel her sort of reserves cracking. You can feel those, like, that focus cracking. She do with what we're talking about because... Uh, no, of just war. in general. Uh, it's... He's it's overworked and overtired. A lot happened. Yeah. That's kind of it. Yeah. Okay. So cool. uh, now specifically what you feel is you feel a 
white hot rage. Um, some of it is, some of it, you feel it. It has that that sort of almost stale feeling of old emotion that has just sort of been below the surface for a long time. But some of it is new. Some of it is new. Is this directed? Like, he, within, like, this space, or is she just, this is just her standard, her low-grade rage that she feels all the time? I think... So, I think, uh, in this... What you would be able to tell, um, is that... Um... This seems like it's definitely as a result of everything that's happened recently. Cool. Um, it's not specifically about what's happening here, but you can see, like, underneath all of that rage, there is an iron determination. Yes. Um, but a little bit, digging a little bit deeper than that, you're getting the sense that Wire's mask of calm and control is maybe even more of a mask than you realized. Cool. Um, in this particular moment. Uh, but you see as she stands uh, after listening to this all, and she looks at the rest of you, and she just shakes her head and says, whatever the consequences of this are, we'll deal with it. Okay. Okay. I while Albina was noticing all of that, this is really abstract, but I would like to have a brain rave, if you'll let me. Mm -hmm. I would like to do something really abstract. While everyone's talking, as I said before, this is not Bean's wheelhouse. This is not anything she knows anything about. And she's been focusing really hard to prevent mine from wandering, um, but feeling wire very suddenly that would have immediately caught like her peripheral, you know, attention. Mm -hmm. um, and as I'm, she's kind of absorbing all of this info and kind of like feels that like nesting doll of <laughs> of things that she's getting a peek into for the first time. I don't specifically. She's not prying, mm -hmm. but. And I will spend for this. Like I don't really even know sure. what I just. I just. I have. I need this to happen somehow. This the sensation of or like the visual, the emotional equivalent of that crack that Bina felt. I want to open that door essentially, and I want to like reach out for her. Like, like, if I can reach out and hold her hand through that emotion, and like, not literally, like, I'm not trying to pull her out. I'm not trying to make her like know that I'm in her brain, but like, she has been holding a lot back. And Bina, as an empath, but also Bina, who went through what she did last year, it's it's not good for you. And it's not good to like hold yourself together like that. And so just like, I want to hold her hand inside that rage because she shouldn't have to stop feeling it, but she also shouldn't have to carry that by herself. And literally like this can be like a passing wave of something, but like that is like, I don't know, I need that out of this right now. And I don't know what that, what the implications of that are or like what, but like, Wire is alone all the time, and I think Bina feels something there that is like, I need to hold her hand. Okay. But in my brain. Um, then I am going to have you make a roll on this one. Yes, please. Um, this is going to be an intellect roll, an intellect task, and the yeah. difficulty of this, it's going to be pretty high. Yes. The difficulty of this is going to be eight. Yes, correct. Awesome. Okay. So, uh, 
for those of you keeping track at home, that's a that's a twenty four that you need mm -hmm. on a D twenty. <laughs> so excellent. Cast sensing emotions and dispositions. Our only uh, role so far tonight, guys. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's just crazy. You know. That's, yeah. Emotional support. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Tasks involving motions, sensing disposition. Yeah. Okay. So that brings this isn't really a... To... It do drops two. Drops two. Drops two. Okay. Six. Great. Um, this isn't really a social interaction. It's a just... This is in her brain. This is me trying yeah, to make a connection. That's... So this isn't quite it. I mean... There's an argument here, I think, to be made about that. You'll let me have that. it. <laughs> You'll take it. I'm gonna let's. We'll put a pin in that. Okay. We'll maybe come back to it. Yeah, then. Hard maybe. Maybe we'll come. Uh, hard maybe. Yeah. Hard what else maybe. You, what else you got? Um. What's the thing that we modify to do my brain stuff? I don't know, just being an empath, I don't know. I don't, I don't even know what we use to do her, like, make other people feel her things. Mm -hmm. um, I think mostly that's, uh, it's flavor for, like, your, uh, speaker abilities, I think. Yeah, that's right, that's right. I haven't had to, like, actually account for yeah, it in yeah, a while. Yeah. I, I don't know, I don't even know what the, what, hold on. True sense of, that's not doing anything for me here. Do I have any sort of like, uh, like asset to this because she cracked, she like opened up for a second because I was able to like. No, I think that's what's letting you do this. Do it in the first place? Yeah. Okay, cool. Just, yeah, that's yeah. fine. Do you still have the, the like mind read? Can you do like mind reading? Would that help you in this? Mm -hmm. I, I drop. I drop oh, you dropped reading. it. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was like, after a while, I realized I was like, it was kind of a fun progression. But then I was like, this really isn't a Bina like ability. Yeah. <laughs> One to six, which makes it doable. But sorry, guys, this is like so. I don't. So many of my abilities are like They're good. Fake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, this whole time Bean is a fake? Oh no. my god. <laughs> Everything Actually, I have is abilities, Bina's which isn't going to lower the tat. Like, isn't right. going to lower it. Yeah. These are all, because, like, of my so, of my skills, it's social interactions and sensing emotions and dispositions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those are the only things that are going to lower mm -hmm. it. Everything else I have is, like, like an, an ability, not a skill. Sure, sure. Um... Which I mean, I'll spend. I'm gonna spend afterwards, but I don't have it. I don't think I have anything else, unless there's okay. some sort of circumstantial thing that'll help me here. Yeah, I'm, I've been kind of turning over this idea of the social interaction thing, and I don't think I'm gonna count it. There. It, that makes yeah, sense. I didn't little, think it counted either. <laughs> it's a little like there. That's think like talking. That's me like appealing with yeah, my words, there's, there's which an I'm not doing. There's an argument to be made about like the fact that like addressing someone else's emotions, regardless of in what capacity it's done, is still sort of a social thing. But I think. I'm not going to count it in this case because cool. this is a very weirdly specific thing. So like, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, well, my edge will automatically drop it two more. So okay. I'm going to four. And then I'm going to spend two. Okay. Sounds good. Just get it down to... Difficulty two? Difficulty two. All right. So you I'm just said if I want to drop it. <laughs> That's, that's I be really it. want to do this. I want to connect. I've been wanting to. I wanted to. I wanted to connect with Wire this entire campaign. I'm gonna drop it down to to a one. Okay. So I just need to do my math better. We're gonna better. try this. Yeah. Yep. Where's my Bina die? There it is. I am gonna say this though. Here's what I'm gonna say. Mm. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna give this to you right now, which is that it's it's a it's a low it's a low roll, but if you. Uh, if you fail in this role because of the nature of what you're doing, I am not going to allow no, roll. I'm not gonna allow I wasn't this. planning yeah. on doing that anyways. I was like, if I fail, it'll just have mm -hmm. to be a wire is the way yeah. that she is. And I think that that's very tasty narrative. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. Hmm. Here we go, Bina Oba. Come on, come on. Come on. <laughs> What'd you roll? What'd you roll? A one. You rolled a one? A um... one, it's a one. The dice said no, no, no helping oh, wire. Oh no. Okay. 
GM, hey, GM intrusion, guess what? I have a, um, I have an inability in intellect defense rolls. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh no. So. I could feel, incredible. I could feel that it was going to fail incredible. too. Absolutely incredible. I love this. This is great. Um, okay. My so, brain rave. My brain rave. Here is what happens, um, Bina. Yeah. The first thing that happens as you sort of like reach out, you're not really even sure what you're doing. You're operating entirely on an, on instinct here. You're yeah. kind of like reaching out through these sort of cracks that Wire has in the like in in her own sort of mental defenses. The thing that shield that barrier that she keeps in place to keep that that iron will, that focus that she keeps at all times, that firm lid that she keeps on anything that could distract her from her tasks at hand. Um, that thing that has been there that you have only ever rarely, as long as you've known Wire, have only ever rarely felt anything slip by. Um, you feel the fact that that is kind of cracking, that Wire, for the first time since you've known her, is reaching her limits. Um, and as you kind of reach for that instinctually, you sort of don't take into account how strong those emotions are because you can't, you're not feeling the entirety of them. But as you reach for them, you're almost overwhelmed by that, just that sheer rage that, uh, and the thing that's shocking about it is it's not even this, like, white-hot sort of surface rage that Wire is feeling as a result of everything that has happened in the past, uh, in the, in the past, uh, 48-plus hours. What does you in is that, is that sort of much cooler surf, almost like, 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 um, like, um, uh, the difference between like magma and lava right like like it's the thing that has been there it's still hot but it's settled and it's not going anywhere um that's what really does you in the depth of that pain and rage that wire has been fostering for years pulls you in to the point where instinctually you pull away you just try to get out and in that moment two things happen one you see as Wire's eyes slide over to you. Oh, um, she! I think when I when I have to pull out, if I feel it, like she fully like will like like gets oh yeah. no, no. up and stands like I knock my chair over, like I am like yeah, up definitely and, like and, cause but, a scene. But you know that Wire knows. You know that yeah. Wire knows that you were there, and she sort of looks at you as you sort of topple over. But you also, I just like I am just like looking at her like you wide eyed. Also, feel whatever was left of that of that barrier that she kept there just shatters. Um, and you see, you feel not the full extent of it because at this, by this point, Bina, your, your, your mind has sort of. I'm brain yeah. scramble. I think there's like tears in her eyes. I yeah. think she's like barely like trying to like mm -hmm. get, regain her balance yeah. and footing again. Wire looks at you and just, you can see the kind of the color rising in her cheeks as she looks at you, Bina. And then she like turns to you, Mason. Um, as you you all see the disposition change in Wire. And uh -huh. she, she like through clenched teeth just looks at you, Mason, and just says, this time you're gonna, you have something that you didn't have before. You have me this time. Um, and she looks around at the rest of you and she says, I don't care what it takes. Fuck the consequences. We do what it takes to take these assholes down. It's the only thing that matters anymore. It's the only thing we have. Um, and she stands up and she just storms out of the room. Uh, you can see Zaya eyes wide for once like sort of shocked into silence what what happened Bina I don't know muted oh okay I will hear you I don't I don't I don't fully know I think um I think I gotta go and Bina's gonna just like walk, <laughs> walk out. She's not following mm -hmm. her, but I think, I 
I think that was a lot of, I think that yeah. was a lot for a little miss inability <laughs> to mental defenses. Um, and Adina doesn't really feel that particular emotion very often, if at all. <laughs> and I think she just needs to go for a walk. <laughs> yeah. So sorry okay. to that scene, but. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah, she just walks out in kind of like a uh, shaky, weird days. Zaya and Z Becker like Z exchange a quick look, and like you can see like a wordless exchange passes between the two of them. Okay, you two. Okay, can you elaborate, please, for the rest of us? Do you know what that was about? What's Wire's personal connection to the syndicate here, or regulators, or something? It was Nothing. something, right? Last, the only time I've ever seen her break like that is when she found out what happened to her fiance while she was recovering and unconscious. I think this might have just all this might have just been uh, the show that broke the camel's back. Becker just sort of like <laughs> leans in and just says, okay. From, from this point forward, we have to operate under the assumption that wire is a liability. Yeah. I've worked with too many people who let their anger get the best of them and color their judgment. And I think this very well might be the case. Peach, I've seen you put people to sleep. <laughs> it's very likely. I'm not saying we need to do it, but I'm saying we might. Why don't, I mean, sh we're all going through a lot of stress. Why don't we give her some time to cool off? I mean, she's, D don't you think that's a bit extreme? We don't have time. Okay, well, if it becomes necessary, I'll. That's all I'm asking. That's all I'm asking. Okay, but if why don't we necessary. figure out what we want to do and and we can focus on why or after? Yeah. We won't bring her with us. What I'm saying is, in this state, I doubt she'll allow herself to be kept out of it. And we can't afford any mistakes right now. Maybe it won't come to that, and I hope it doesn't. Well, I mean, I won't let her go in there with us like that. That's all I'm asking. Okay. All right. From this point forward, operational security demands that nobody who is outside of this room right now know anything about what we're doing. Everyone else is on a need-to-know basis. Correct. Yeah. All right. Let's get started then. We're coming out of FTL not too long, not too long from now. And we have a lot of work to do before then. Yeah. So, what's some important other important piece of information we can get? I'm just gonna start going through. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The files. Um. Elsewhere on the ship, Bina. You, just sort of wander, and still in sort of a haze from that, not really paying attention to where you're going. I think she's got a little bit of like an echo chamber of this like ra like I don't think she can fully like expel it or immediately like I think she's like trying to parse I feel like with that one like this has to this is like a, she's trying to like vivisect this like this rage from her own emotions yeah. right now I think that's kind of what she's doing while she's walking you you know as you're as you're like sort of trying to process everything that you felt in that sort of brief flash of intense emotion processing it you're feeling you know there was that rage the old rage that has been there for a long time that has become part of wire part of who she is but you also see there's pain yeah deep deep pain grief there's yeah i was gonna say it's the grief grief that's there it's masking there's guilt mm -hmm. all of those things blending together all of them having formed into 
a an emotional tumor within her like her her psyche it's there it's deep and it's it is uh it is deeply rooted to the point where you're not entirely sure where those emo like, you've never felt anything like this but you've never felt someone so tied to their emotions that you couldn't tell where the person began and their and their rage and pain ended and at a certain point you find yourself sort of surprised to find yourself walking by um, walking through at kind of at when when the next you actually find the capacity to sort of pay attention to your surroundings you find yourself in the vicinity of uh, of the living quarters and as you walk you can see where wires quarters are and the door is open and as you kind of walk you catch a glimpse of wire inside just sort of hair sort of uh sort of down over her face as she leans up against the wall um sort of sitting on the ground her knees drawn up to her chest uh, her arms just sort of re elbows resting loosely on on her knees and you can hear that her her body entirely racked with sobs um and as you stand there i i would have to stop yeah at the door she looks up at you and sees you you can see her eyes like just bloodshot and red um she's she... mm -hmm. clearly this is not a talking time yeah. this is a this is a catharsis time mm -hmm. i'm going to step into the room with her um, uh she doesn't let you because oh, as you okay. as you are okay. standing there she makes eye contact with you for a second um she stands up walks over towards you and uh as she she makes eye contact with you for just a moment and then closes the door. Okay. I'm gonna sit down on the wall next to her quarters. I still have some jumbled going on. But I'm gonna sit. I miss it. Okay. And I wait outside her door. Um, I think that's where we're going to stop. That's where we will pick up next week. Cool. Oh, oh guys. Okay. Um, <sighs> wow. <laughs> the moment you said you're going to do that, like, I know what's going to happen. I, can, I know it's going to be bad. I'm, one. I'm, gonna be bad. Believe, I'm still not over that. I haven't rolled a one in so long. Oh, man, I oh. thought you were going to fail too. I do. I know. Me all too. of us felt it. All of us felt it. As soon as I said, because <laughs> no, I, I it literally. Was be good. Yeah, oh I was my god. Three. I literally I made the decision before I rolled. I was mm. like, if this fails, I'm not going to reroll. And then you said that I can't reroll. And <laughs> that's not that. <laughs> and then I rolled it and it was a one. And I was like, we all. <laughs> It had to. It had to happen. She had her yeah. tipping point. She Incredible. had her tipping point. She's been uh, keeping it night. together for way too long. The moment you were like, "I haven't." What, the moment Lucas described that feeling, and you were like, "I want to do something," I was like, "Oh no!" Be <laughs> like, oh, no. <laughs> Lena is doing everything in her power right now to not think about what happened three days ago. Yeah. So like, we're gonna get in trouble a little bit. <laughs> yep, and I love Absolutely. it. Oh, God, I, not, uh, I am not going to get over that one for a long time. That's <laughs> I can't I believe it. I can't believe it. It felt right, though. Like, it happened, yeah. and I was like, fuck. Yeah. Yes. Let's go. <laughs> well, and the thing is, like, I didn't even consider, right? Like, I didn't consider, like, an intrusion in that moment. I was thinking, like, yeah. okay, you, like, because so many times you've, you've like, when you've re-rolled, you've rolled, like, one under, right? Like, mm -hmm. so many times that's happened. That's what I was expecting. So I wasn't even thinking about wow excellent juicy Amazing. upsetting juicy. devastating <laughs> wow okay well everybody <laughs> um at least i got to so kiss much. an alien that's Yay! true yeah. <laughs> that's true let's focus on that let's focus yes. on that. yeah let's focus uh, on the good. Good board. Um, very good everyone thank you so much for coming and stopping by uh and watching uh this episode this, <laughs> 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 this. um Ooh, man, I knew tonight was going to be an intense episode, but I didn't realize, even I didn't realize how far that was going to go. Um, all right. As I said at the beginning of this episode uh, that I would uh, talk about 
here at the end. Um, there are so many ways that you can support this channel that don't involve, you know, uh, giving money to Twitch. For instance, uh, as you notice at the bottom, we have our, our uh, donation goal with our monthly donation. At the end of which, Freeman and I, this month's goal, Freeman and I will be playing The Forest and scaring the shit out of ourselves in that game. Because we're both mm -hmm. very bad at it, and it's a very scary game. Um, so, uh... If Watch you want me to... be a lumberjack. <laughs> <laughs> it's like 90% lumberjack, 10% being terrified out of our minds. Um... So, so just like a normal day in Washington. <laughs> oh, hey, okay. yeah. that's well, my perspective. You don't have to say it. Um, but you're right, though. You're right. Um, but yeah, so if you want to support us, that's one great way. However, as always, our coffee is a great way to do sort of one time uh, supports and donations uh, to help keep everything going. Everything we make right now goes right back into the channel um, to bring you all of this and more. And there will be more. Uh, but of course, we also have our Patreon, which many of you fine folks uh, are uh, are members of, which gives you access to things such as our uh, every other week we do our tabletop tool chest, giving you all kinds of little seeds for to, for use in your own tabletop RPGs or writing projects or however you want to use them. The sky is the limit. Um, you just had some spooky adventure hooks blow through, so check that out. Yeah, most of them written by Freeman. So <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> hell yeah. Um, we Spook Master it also brings you uh, access to our media club list. So every month, uh, various members of the cast and crew at Rule of Lore will give a little bit of insight about things that we have media we've been consuming lately and uh, some recommendations and things. I haven't like done that. that in so long. Wait, I should probably do that. Yeah, we'll we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll we'll pass out the next one, and you can definitely participate in that one, Drac, because uh, I'm sure you have a lot of stuff. I'm sure I have many. I, I, I believe it. Um, so. Yeah, so that there's that. And of course, at our top tier, we have our world builders uh where you, yes you, could participate in some uh world building once a month for this very show. Of course, this show is ending, but it will also carry over into whatever we do next. So you can do that there too. Um I think that's most of it. Um uh the donation bar below uh links most links to our uh our Streamlabs uh, so if you want to contribute towards that to support us and contribute towards the goal, that would be the way to do it. But if not, uh, any of those other ways I just mentioned are excellent. Um, I mentioned before at the beginning, uh, we have Republic City Rumble, our collaboration with Q Times. Um, this Saturday at 6 p.m. Pacific time, our fourth and final episode um, will be airing right here on Rule of Lore. Uh, all previous episodes are available either on Q Times or on Rule of Lore. Both of us have, pl both channels have playlists on YouTube co containing all of the previous episodes, so you will be able to find those there. So if you haven't watched those, um, now would be an excellent time to do so. Uh, you have plenty of time, I think, to watch those and be there live for the final episode. Um... We also, this Friday, have Ramblemancy, uh, 7 p.m. Pacific Time. Uh, will we have a guest? Will we not have a guest? Only one way to find out. Um, we'll be talking about something mm. or everything or nothing. I mean, it's really that's really the, the Ramblemancy way. Uh, uh, I would be remiss if I didn't rem remind everybody to join the Discord. Um it's the if if you want to know what's going on uh if you're not in the discord already and you want to know like you want to be one of the first people to know what's going on here at rule of lore that's the place to go um yes freeman which which cord discord also follow remy on twitter absolutely <laughs> oh, remy yes, follow remy too. Um, that's enough from me uh I'll turn it over for the, to the rest of you who have any uh, any announcements, anything. I know that s some of you have some things to uh, re-announce at the end here. So, Power play on Sunday. Drag's going to be there. It's very exciting. I'm be there. Two times. Five p.m. Pacific. <laughs> ah! <laughs> I'm so excited. Uh, <laughs> I was so stoked. I need to run some things by Rick again, but... <laughs> I'm ready cool. to be destroyed. <laughs> and I'm sure I will be. <laughs> Um, other thing is on Friday I'm going to be over on Kita's Petite at 6pm Eastern for um, Halo and Horns one shot 
on Saturday, I'm going to be on front again at channel at 3 p.m. Eastern for a babe, uh, wacky baby races um, <laughs> run shot where we play babies Mario karting around. I'm just going to say that instead. Um, Mario karting around. <laughs> I'll be playing baby Daffy Duck, which is going to be a lot of fun. I'm not doing the voice. I tried many times and I can't do it, but imagine I, I do. Um, and that's it. I'm very excited. <laughs> Um, I will have some things to announce coming up as well, but we're not quite there yet, so stay tuned. Here we have the patented rule of lore announcement of the announcement. The announcement. Uh, <laughs> You'll know soon, TM. Mm-hmm. Soon, TM, exactly. Soon, TM. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for coming and hanging out with us tonight on this uh, very intense uh, uh, episode. We will see you here again, hopefully on Friday for Ramble Mancy. But if not, we'll see you the next time you decide to come roll with us. Good night and good zone, everybody. Good night. Bye.